All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, this meeting is being recorded. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. This is a hybrid meeting of the select board. It is also being uh, broadcast and aired via Zoom uh, by the, the town. Meeting. You please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Our all set, Mr. Governor? Okay. Yes, and our first order of business is to sign the band's bonds. We have lengthy motions and presentation, right? No presentation. We don't need a presentation for this. We need a little presentation. I can give you. Go ahead. Welcome, Ms. Rourke, our finance directors here. Thank you. Good evening. Some of you may know that um, two weeks ago we had a bond rating call. Um, our AA2 rating um, was maintained. And we were um, we were pleased with that as we were not going into this issuance um, looking for an upgrade or anything like that. We continue to build policies and procedures so that um, you know we can explore an upgrade. But uh, WA two is still um, a good rating. So we have a van sale and we have a bond sale. Um, I'll quickly review the van sale. So the van sale, um, we uh, short term borrowed the water interconnection land purchase um, and that's for Nine Mill Street and since that is still an open um, item, we have to continue to short term borrow that. Um, if we long term borrow it, uh, then uh, we would be stuck with a permanent debt. Um, the other item is the high school middle school. That's a, a ban as well, and we will continue to uh, ban on that. And then we have two uh, design studies. One is for the town center sewer design. Um, you will see in a few moments when we review the FY23 capital plan and uh, capital submissions that the town sewer, you know, actual construction work was submitted for FY23. Um, and Don Kelleher will, the chair of um, CIPC, will go over that. And the reason why that was banned is because we will roll that design into the long-term borrowing of that project. And um, if we didn't do that, then we would only be able to long-term borrow the design piece for five years. And lastly is the intersection study design. And we have um, some intersection construction um, that was submitted for FY23 capital, so you will see that momentarily when John Kelleher goes over that. So we have, you know, when those go long term, the construction, the design piece will go with it so that we can borrow longer for the entire project. Um, we would only be able to borrow five years for that as well. Okay, so that's, that's the band yeah. sale. And just questions, a couple of questions. Anybody have questions? None. I have a couple, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. When is the last time our rating was upgraded? Uh, so I've been here ten and a half years, um, and it had it stayed it has stayed at double A two. Um, Don Kelleher or Abby Herbert might know better. I think it's only gone three Steve, do you know? I do not. Okay. I do not recall. And you I, mentioned. I know we've this. argued that we should <laughs> have a better rating. Yes. Yeah. But you mentioned this too about your um, 
your thoughts in terms of, or your goals in terms of improving that, mm -hmm. which would be the fiscal policies? Yeah, so a few of the things um, that, you know, help communities uh, go for a uh, bond rate increase, and we've, you know, sat with our financial advisors, Hilltop Securities, and asked them, you know, what more can we do, this and that. So policies, definitely, because they feel that if you have a policy, you know, whether it's uh, stabilization, which we do have a policy for that, or, you know, a capital improvement uh, plan policy, a free cash policy, you know, a anything like that um, to show, or an OPEC policy, you know, they, they're very pleased to see that annually, now we, you know, through the raise and appropriate process, um, budget for, for OPEC, um, they like to see those type of consistencies. They also um, like to see you build your reserves. And so when I say reserves, it's the different stabilization funds, and, and whether it's a regular stabilization or debt capital stabilization, you know, you create another special purpose stabilization, you know, they like to see that. They also, um, you know, they see that we had the sale of town owned land but they view that as one-time revenue and that eventually we would use that for some large project or you know, pay for debt service and things like that. So they somewhat discount that from us um, because it is not considered a restricted use item, whereas a stabilization fund requires two-thirds vote, sale of town on land does not. So those are some of the things that we can work on. Um, the town administrator, myself, um, Mr. O'Leary has been involved in the past. Um, uh, former select board member Christigo, Michael Crisco was involved. Um, the treasurer collector. You know we've we've had numerous, even with that that auditor as well, um, to see what we can do. So we will work with our new outside auditor to see if maybe they have some ideas, sample. Uh, fiscal policies and things like that. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. oh, and I have another question on, and this might be for Mr. Gilberta, but we've talked about the sale of Nine Mill Street, didn't we? Wouldn't if we had sold this, and it seems like the prime opportunity to sell it that comes off of the debt service list. So why are we not selling that, especially right now? So through you, Madam Chair, the challenge we've had is that the way in which we properly retain upland area for any potential future municipal use while still selling the lot and having the lot be a usable lot. Um, we struggled with whether we needed to adjust zoning, going through some sort of an A&R plan, and, and, it, and it, I think that what we're finding is it, it's looking more and more like expanding the purpose of the existing easements on the property that we have for a water line maybe the cleanest way for us to turn around and sell this op the, the property um, fairly quickly. Um, so that's something that we'll bring back up with the wastewater working group. Um, I know Mr. Clark has worked on it over the past few months and I know Joe has had put some time into it as well. But I, I think we can bring it to, to conclusion and I believe we already have authority from town meeting to sell the property. Okay, because I, I mean, what? How, how, much, how much is the carrying cost on Mill Street? The amount authorized was seven hundred and fifty uh, thousand, and um, the previous issuance issuances is was six hundred and thirty-two. We've had to do some band pay downs because it has been longer than two years that we have short-term borrowed for it. So um, renewal this issue was six hundred and thirty-two thousand. And um, we have a pay down of twenty-seven thousand. We earned a premium of close to thirty-five hundred dollars. So basically, it's costing us. It's costing us money. Yes, we have to pay for the the interest, which is you know on short-term borrowing, you you pay um, just interest, um, and. <coughs> Because we have borrowed longer than two years, we have to 
pay pay downs each year. So, you know, between forty thousand now we're down to thirty thousand. It you know it just depends on the rate that we get. So, for the bands, <coughs> we um, got a, a net interest cost of uh, two point four four three nine percent. So. But the same goes for the high school, middle school. You know, we've had to have pay downs on that as well. Um, but that's one that right now um, we are advised to not long-term borrow on at this point. That project is not closed yet. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments? All set. Think we should sell it yesterday. I mean, I, 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 I would, I would agree with that heartily because it, we can work with the developers. The developers going to buy it, or you know, someone's going to develop it. So we could work on those outstanding issues in a, you know. The issue is retaining, as I understand it, um, Mr. Jones. The issue is trying to retain. Thank you. Access to the rear of the property. You're so soft-spoken, we can't hear you. Right. On the off chance that we need that at some point in the distant future, uh, for if we were to hook into MWI, for example, that would have been the spot that was used for the pumping station, which is why we purchased the original. In my estimation, we were taking advantage of when we bought the property. And since we're not doing NWRA, I think we need to come up with a very good reason for retaining the property as a whole. Or as I believe the town is now trying to do, figure out a way to access the rear of the property and yet still have a reasonable dwelling you could resell. Pretty basically an easement agreement with the buyer. If it's ever needs to be. I'm not moving into it. <laughs> Well, but it, uh, okay. That's just one aspect of it, but maybe we can see a plan. Maybe we can see a plan on that or see where we're at, keep some track of that next meeting, see where we're at with that one. So I know we've been talking about that for a long time, a couple of years. Multiple. Now, since we entered the 99-year yeah. agreement for our water with Andover, so. Okay, and we could use that money for other things that we need. So, do we have a motion? So, Juan, one, hang on. Get your cups of coffee and tea out. Madam Chair, you might want to announce to the public that we have a Oh, yes, and yes. In, in case you were wondering, <laughs> that we had a little bit of an organizational shake up so <laughs> Mr. Studo is now the vice chair I'm still the chair Mr. Studo is the vice chair and we we have happily appointed Mr. Walner as our clerk I'm not sure how he's happy not so happy <laughs> not everybody voted day not tonight <laughs> all right here it goes I Richard Walner the clerk of the select board of the town of North Reading Massachusetts certified that at a meeting of the board held May 9th 2022 of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and in which a quorum was present the following votes were unanimously passed, all of which appear upon the official record of the board in my custody. Voted that the maximum useful life of the departmental equipment listed below to be financed with the proceeds of the $65,000 borrowing authorized by the vote of the town past June 5th, 2021, Article 21, is hereby determined pursuant to GL C4471 to be as follows. Purpose, tool cap 5600. Borrowing amount 65,000, maximum useful life 10 years. Further voted that the sale of the 6,205,000 general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2022 bonds of the town dated May 26, 2022 to Janie Montgomery Scott LLC at the price of $6,602,628.84 and accrued interest of any is hereby approved and confirmed. The bond shall be payable on May 15th of the years and in the principal amounts and bearer interest at the respective rates as follows. Year 2023, 410,000, 5%. 2024, 
2024, 400,000,000, 5%. 2025, 400,000, 5%. 2026, 395,000, 5%. 2027, 390,000, 5%. 2028, 380,000, 5%. 2029, 380,000, 5%. 2030, 380,000, 5%. 2031, 375,000, 5%. 2032, 365,000, 5%. 2033, 290,000, 4%. 2034, 290,000, 4%, 2035, 290,000, 4%, 2036, 280,000, 4%, 2037, 280,000, 4%, and 2042, 900,000, 4%. Further vote that the bonds- Excuse me, can I just, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. No problem. Is it, should this be motion to vote, motion, motion made, or does it have to be, it's presuming that we voted on all this and- Did you begin with, I, I moved? It's and move that? No, it's just. It, it, it just I'm just reading right it's through. It's not what it reading says. like that. I'm reading exactly what it says. He's stating what we already voted, and unfortunately, we didn't actually vote yeah. yet. So it should be motion, motion to. So, friendly amendment would be I move that, the clerk. That what? That you begin with I move that, rather than. You have to start over? No. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah, so instead of further voted, which we haven't, we, we just for the interest of those attending, we haven't voted on any of this yet. That's the whole purpose of us convening and hearing. So change further voted to I move? Yes. Okay. Right. Sorry. All right, I'll continue on. I move to approve the sale of, uh, oh, sorry. Um, I move that the bonds maturing on May 15, 2042 shall be subject to mandatory redemption or mature as follows. Term bond due May 15, 2042, in year 2038, 180,000, 2039, 180,000, 2040, 180,000, 2041, 180,000, 2042, which is final maturity at 180,000. I also move to approve the sale of $5,727,577, general obligation bond anticipation notes to the town dated May 27, 2022, and payable May 25, 2023, to Piper Sandler and Company at par and accrued interest, if any, plus premium of $31,673.50. I move that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated April 28, 2022, and a final official statement dated May 5th, 2022, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, and approved, and adopted. I further move that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale, and preliminary official statement dated April 27th, 2022, and final official statement dated May 5th, 2022, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. I move that the bond shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions as set forth in the bond official statement. I move that the town treasurer and the select board be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing significant events disclosure undertaking in the compliance with SCC Rule 15C 2 through 12 in such forms as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference to the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and notes from time to time. I move that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post-issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient or such procedures are current in place to review and update such procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds and notes and to comply with relevant securities laws. I move that any certificates or documents relating to the bonds and the notes may be executed in several counterparts, each of which shall be regarded as an original and all of which shall constitute one and the same document. Delivery of an executed counterpart of a signature page to a document by electronic mail in a PDF file or by other electronic transmission shall be as effective as delivery of a manually executed counterpart signature page to such document and electronic signatures on any of the documents shall be deemed original signatures for the purpose of the documents and all matters relating thereto having the same legal effect as original signatures. 
I move that each member of the select board, the town clerk, and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes uh, will be taken at a meeting open to the public, that no vote was taken by secret ballot, that a notice stating the place, date, time, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above votes, was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or the on the <coughs> municipal uh, building that the office of the town clerk is loaded or if applicable in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed by or approved by the Attorney General as set forth in 94 CMR 29.032B, at least 48 hours, not including Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so close to the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decision in connection with the sale of the bonds and notes were taken in executive session, all in accordance with general laws, C, chapter 30A, 18 to 25 as amended. Second. That's a motion by Mr. Walner, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Need my water? <laughs> we we did receive, uh, as, as part of that, I guess, omnibus col motion, we did receive from our treasurer, and she usually does speak with us with regard to the bands and the, the bidding on the bands, and we do have a, a, a memo i'm sorry to call you up to speak about it but we did receive your memo instructing us that the low bid was from piper sandler and company and that's who the um that's who should be awarded the sale of the van of the band so we we're um that was incorporated into the motions that were just read any other questions okay ms roar yes i just i just want to know that as part of that motion well, also was included $6,525,000 of long-term bonds. <coughs> and um, the uh, rate on that is 3.51%. Uh, uh, <coughs> and that was the lowest bidder from uh, Jeannie Mon uh, Montgomery Scott. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Roy. Yes. Okay, good. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good thing. <laughs> you said it was going to be. <laughs> oh, there's more. Right? No. Nope. This should be so. one motion. It was one long collection of motions. There are documents to be signed besides the motion, oh, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Including a certification that matches what you just read. So I just signed Okay, I got it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right, our next order, our next order of business is a vote to sign the June 6, 2022 town meeting warrant. Mr. Gilberto. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, before you is the warrant for the June 6, 2022 annual town meeting. Um, the draft resembles the version that you have seen in prior discussions with the very notable addition of language relative to the sewer betterment bylaw amendment recommended by the Department of Public Works. Um, Madam Chair, we normally go into the detailed discussion of these prior to the vote taking place. Um, this is a bit of a rare instance where the language is coming into the board in its recommended form this evening. Um, if you'd like, I have the, finance, the, uh, the Public Works Director here this evening. Um, prior to your vote to execute the warrant, um, you could take a presentation from him. Um, otherwise, we could take that presentation um, later on in the evening as part of your warrant article recommendations, but the article would already be on the warrant at that point. So you right. may wish to hear from him now. Right. I think that's important for us because it's been a blank sheet every time we've talked about this yes. in the past couple of months. So now that it's in the packet, I think we need some explanation of that because we really haven't had time to read through it and 
So please, why don't you come up and join us at the table and, or at the podium, whatever you're more comfortable mm -hmm. with. Right here. All right, if you don't mind pulling the microphone close to you too, we can hear you, but people at home can't hear you unless you talk into them. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. Um, so uh, tonight I'd like to uh, give you a little bit of explanation as to the request or proposal to modify the existing uh, betterment bylaw. So I think we have a little PowerPoint mm -hmm. that we can launch. Uh, the current bylaws relating to betterments cover not just sewer that we're talking about tonight, but also for private road conversions um, and some other private road repairs, and also water betterments as well. They all <coughs> seem to be under the same general um, guidance or, or requirement that the town pay for 50% uh, of the betterments. And you'll see, I believe you have some draft language in your packets, that you will see that that's the case uh, for, you know, sewer betterments as well. And as we are starting um, the planning and also the design of a pretty significant sewer project, you know, I was looking at the betterment bylaw and really see an opportunity to, you know, have some changes that, you know, make sense for this project, but also make sense for, you know, potentially other um, sewer expansions that may happen, you know, in the future in, in different areas um, close to the, the uh, sewer, proposed sewer uh, project. So I want to uh, talk about, you know, why the changes are being proposed. So the town of North Reading is currently planning and residing, as I <coughs> spoke, a municipal wastewater project. And we're connecting, um, proposed to connect to the Greater Lawrence St. Bay <coughs> District. Uh, the current bylaws relating to sewer betterments require that the town pay 50% of the cost of the betterments, providing no flexibility to the town to assess otherwise. And the current bylaws do not provide sufficient framework and assessment methodology through references to master law relating to sewer betterment assessments. So, again, I, I think there is some, some very standard language. Uh, I have spoken with uh, KP Law in regards to, you know, what other communities are using. They, you know, made recommendation and have uh, proposed it and had approved by law changes. Uh, so if you go to the next uh, page, we'll see you know, one, what does it say now? And then we'll talk about what we're proposing to do. So, all right, so the sewer betterments like those uh, for private street betterments, water main improvements, when funds are made available, require the town to provide 50% of the necessary funds for sewer betterments. And at the public hearing, if a majority of the property owners residing on a street and representing a majority of the estimated water usage vote in favor of the construction of the sewer improvements uh, and the acceptance of the cost for construction, then the Public Works Department would recommend to the Select Board that this project be placed on a, a list for construction. So again, it would be subject to availability of funds, which is kind of, you know, sort of um, unknown exactly how that would be determined to be a, a fundable project, but I would imagine a, a list would be developed and somehow funds would, would be available to go down the list of projects. So at the public hearing though, the, uh, the abutters would also be given a not to exceed assessment cost estimate based on estimated usage, uh, typically defined you know, in the Title V codes. So uh, the final assessment is the lower of either the actual cost of the project when you complete the project and figure the final cost, or when you um, compare it to the estimated assessment. If it's lower, that's what will be charged. 
the, the actual remaining costs are still going to be subject then to the town paying that, that cost that was above and beyond the estimate. So, um, what would we like it to say? So, the requirement for the town to specifically pay 50% of the betterment costs is eliminated uh, by the first section of the, the betterment bylaws. The select board or town meeting can choose to assess up to 100% of the project costs to property owners receiving the benefit of the new sewer system. So the amount of the project cost to be assessed is then apportioned into cost to be immediately assessed to sewer, to sewer budding property owners as sewer benefits. And those costs to be reserved for sewer privilege fees assessments in the future to non abutting properties that connect to the sewer line at a later date. So as would typically happen, you know, we, we do construct a sewer line and people will uh, connect, we will be for providing sewer stubs for them to connect if they are budding the sewer project. But those properties that may be one parcel behind uh, or a street that comes in later through another connection, another expansion, those are all um, subject to sewer pr privilege fees uh, for the cost of typically what was charged in the betterment so that they would share in the cost um, of, of the sewer um, project. <coughs> and uh, there's capacity designed into the system so that you know they can connect. We are building a system not just for today's uh, abutting properties, but potential growth of the town uh, of those properties, but also connections of additional properties that we may find in the future need to connect for failure of Title V or what have you. So all abutting properties, so, that, so that's the, so that's basically the assessment of you know, <coughs> separating the cost of the project that was determined to be um, charged as betterments into two groups, those that are going to be bettered and those that will be receiving a fee later if they in fact do connect. The select board may also separate the cost of general benefits facilities, such as pump stations, trunks, and force mains, from that of special benefit facilities such as sewer mains serving about the property. So basically, you have pump stations that are going to be receiving flow from not just those that are connecting today, but those that will connect tomorrow. So, you know, we have future, um, I guess, uh, capacity, and, and we want to design that system to have that capacity because we know that there will be need for that in the future. And again, either for the, the growth of the existing properties that are connecting, uh, today and or other properties that may see some environmental needs in, in the future. So we uh, we have a system that has you know a trunk line that goes down right through uh, 28 and also um, North Street to Lowell and also Park Street onto Concord. And so that that spine of, of a sewer expansion project uh, really touches the majority uh, of, of properties in our industrial. Uh, the commercial industrial areas and it does uh, cross over into some of the uh, residential properties as well. So that's that's the basis of the changes. Do we have questions? Mr. Waller. Sure, back to the map. So if I'm following, like if we take this as an example, these people will immediately get an ass assessment? That is correct. Anybody that assess that uh, fronts the uh, the sewer would get assessed. So it would be along North Street from the intersection of Maine, all the way down to Lowell. And uh, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I do. Um, in the in the draft that was provided to us in the warrant article, I don't read it the same way that you're explaining it and I think it's very mis misleading so where you're starting out in your draft saying that um, the, the town you strike the language will provide 50 percent of the necessary funds and it just says the town will assess betterments approved through the processes outlined below and then the betterment the next up process that's outlined is for private streets where 
on the vote of the majority of the people that are there for private abutters. We pay 50% of that. So th that's the very next thing under, under the following process. And then you strike out sewers in the public water supply, and that's assessed at a different type, which is the uniform unit method. And then the third method that we are adding in there is sewer betterments that we acting as soon as the board acting, that is as sewer commissioners, may assess 100% um, based on the uniform unit method, which is not defined in this. So does that mean that we could assess the cost in any one of those three methods? Because that's how I read it as a layperson, that's how I would read this proposed um, change in the bylaw. So the, the, uh, the initial change is to uh, just make it specific to the sections of the street and water and now the added sewer. So whatever those sections detail as far as you know, percentages of um, the project to be bettered, um, that's still in force. I, what, what was um, the intent here was to first, you know, strike the 50% applying to all those categories, and then be specific in the um, in in the sewer as being up to 100% of uh, the project cost can be assessed instead of just sort of making it 50% for all cases. Now I did have to in, in going through the um, the water. Um, section of the existing bylaw is strike all the sewer language, which, which allowed us to make it a, a, a separate section, as you can see how we laid that out in the bylaw. Is there a reason then why you incorporated in the proposed bylaw? If there was no change to section 25.2, why is that in here for a proposed amendment? I'm not seeing anything in So here. yeah, so 25-2, I, I guess still didn't really strike anything. I, I made the whole section, or I kept the whole section intact for your view, um, where you can see the, the changes that were being made. And, and so none were made in the uh, street sidewalks and sword ring section. <coughs> section. Mrs. Gonzalez? Can you, I'm going to go back to Mr. Walner's question and just clarify a little more. So anybody on that line, even if they do not choose, can they choose whether they want to hook up or not? Or is it an option? So it, it is an option whether they want to connect. It is not an option whether they uh, you know, are assessed a sewer betterment or not. So okay. they're being assessed for a portion of the cost of the, of the project. Uh, for the street work. Each property individually has its own um, cost to connect to a sewer lateral that they will be left at their property front. So from their property to the hookup, is that what they pay? They, they, they share the cost of the entire project, right. some, some portion of it. Right. There's capacity that would be, I guess, reserved for other sewer privilege fee assessments. But whatever uh, is uh, a portion to be um, placed on a betterment assessment, everybody gets that based on a number of sewer units that their property is determined to have. The basis is a single family home. So you would have a single family home having you know, one betterment assessment, but you could have a restaurant that equates to water use of a single family home of three or four or five times that amount. And so, you know, those are the betterment assessments, and you won't see that in detail, but that is an example of um, um, uniform unit method, you know, when you use water use, either actual water use or Title V water use. And those are the things that you wouldn't normally see in a bylaw. The bylaw gives you some framework to work with, but, you know, the details of, of how you do the, the, uh, the assessments are worked out to <coughs> conform to the bylaws that are passed. So in continuing, you know, your question, yeah. they will not um, have to connect and pay individually for the cost to go from their house to the lateral uh, 
on their property line. They can choose to do that at a later time unless for some reason there was some failure of their septic system that the Board of Health mandates that they connect. But they will be assessed and, and you know, they have a choice to um, pay for it over a number of years, 20 or 30 years, um, a, you know, the abetment on their tax bills. Okay. Mr. Gonzales, are you all set? Mr. Studo. So, the simplest way to put it that I'm understanding is to give the town maximum flexibility. Is that, I mean, it's a lot more technical as you've described, but it seems like, again, it's just maximum flexibility for a big project that there's still a lot of variables rather than having to work around a very <coughs> concrete framework. It seems like that's, I'm sorry, I'm using that word, but that's, it seems like it's pretty, under the current uh, rule or bylaw, there's only one way to really go about it. Yeah, that's pre it's pretty rigid the way it is. And it really doesn't make good reference to Mass General Law. I think in those both, for those both reasons, um, yes, I think flexibility and, and having some, some better framework tied to Mass General Law is, is appropriate in what we're doing here today. <coughs> Any other questions? Mr. Waller. Yeah, just furthering up. So the betterment is, it lasts as long as the, it takes to pay off the project? Is yeah, that, so, is that so how that works? Yeah, pretty much so. Pretty, the um, <coughs> Master of the Law did require, you know, usually requires 20 years, but if a bond, from the page is saying, or KP Law is saying that if a bond is, is out there for 30 years, you can actually increase apportionments onto their tax bill for 30 years as well. So it helps the affordability factor on that. Okay. Does it, I mean, I think some people are going to object. Do they have any legal recourse to object? Uh, well, there's legal uh, recourse to file in, uh, an abatement request, okay. you know, but, but just like in real estate, there has to be some good reason for it. Gotcha. And they had their opportunity to present that, and, uh, and, and if that was even denied at the local level, they have a, a right to appeal it to uh, DOR, I believe. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Leary? So, <clears throat> just to try and simplify it a little bit, what, was, what we did is we just called out the, the sewerage portion of the, the current bylaw. We call that out, and we're going to handle that a little bit differently. We're going to allow the board, and again, if the uh, actions of the board are not satisfactory, town meeting can override the board in relation to what the allocation is going to be. If we just left the bylaw as it was, the general populace here, the taxpayers as a whole, would have to absorb at least 50 percent. Well, would have to absorb 50 percent of the cost of all of this, rather than the users. And as we know, this isn't covering the entire community. So what we're looking to do is provide the board uh, and future boards the opportunity to appropriately allocate the costs, the carrying costs, of the project itself, you know, more or less, more to the users, and as more users come on, there'll be greater relief to the general populace and as a whole. Because as more people come on, they're going to assume some of the costs associated with the building out of the project. So uh, the current bylaw doesn't allow that to happen. Uh, the taxpayers would have to, as a whole, have to uh, absorb more of the costs up front and for the entire co length of the project, the financing of the project. And that isn't necessarily fair either in relation to the project, specific project that we're proposing here. So the rest of the bylaw pretty much stays the same as far as the 50-50 split on those other portions, whether it be water or private you know, streets and all the rest. But for sewerage, we just culled that out and allowed the board the flexibility, acting as basically sewer commissioners, uh, to establish what the split's going to be. So, and again, as far as the betterments, uh, to Ms. Gonzalez's uh, question, anybody along the route is going to get bettered. They're going to, they're going to have a cost associated with that because they have the opportunity, whether they decide to avail themselves of it, the value of their property and the opportunity to tie in is there. So what they're going to do is, if they choose not to, they're still going to have the betterment assessed, they just won't have a, a sewer bill, you know, until they do. Mr. Wallman. Yeah, just one other, because we've been talking about, I mean, for years, there's been talk about dividing up the property tax between commercial and residential, right? And so, you know, you have homes that are on this rough route that obviously are not income generating, 
their expenses for that. And you're going to have some businesses that might use as much water as a house, but they're very profitable. Are we, is there any secondary adjustment that's going to happen for their commercial properties that really don't take the sewer, but they're going to benefit from the highway just by location and being on this for future? <coughs> I'm just wondering if there's some adjustment because Again, you have households that are, this is an expense, <coughs> versus businesses where maybe they're not using the water, but they're gonna get a huge benefit. The landlords are gonna get, the people who own the land are gonna get a huge benefit, um, and not empty up as much as I think we're asking the residential people to do. Any comment about that? Just wondering how we square that up. Yeah, so, so we are looking at, you know, unit methods that have the ability to assess on a various different methods and one would be the actual water use and we, we are finding that there's some some issues with that you do have some you know income generating commercial properties that use very little water and have great potential you know if they're just a warehouse with a, with a restroom or a couple of restrooms um, but the potential there obviously with sewers is, is, is pretty significant and there are, uh, you know, other gas stations that, you know, maybe on small lots and uh, little uh, water use. So, so there's also a, a way of looking at it, Title V, regardless of what they're actually using, it's what that property uh, would have to design their septic system for. Uh, and that made that typically is a larger number than what their actual water use is. So that sort of helps to, uh, Sort of even, you know, um, the assessments a little bit further, um, recognizing what the commercial properties, you know, could be doing. And then one step further, you could do a Title V determination on the highest and best use of the property, regardless of what that property is um, currently constructed as. Um, based on the current zoning, it could be something that is um, higher yielding as far as. Uh, a Title Five water use goes, and so you collect, assess, and collect all that um, potential up front, as opposed to an assessment, say, of you know Title Five for the current use. Yeah. But we do have, or would like to have, and I and I think this is where uh, there's another discussion to be had about um, special legislation for increase in use of the property after the assessment. So, you know, looking at um, a number of different communities, it's something that tends to be termed um, compensatory sewer privilege fees, and that just means we're going to assess you now for what you are, and then if you determine or decide to um, have some change in use, we can capture the differential in what we assessed you and what you um, pull a permit to build. Well, that, seems, that just seems <coughs> fair to me. That mm -hmm. seems fair to me because I think that's going to happen. Um, is that going to is that going to get worked in the language well, here, or is that is that something different? I I, I don't know the. It, it's it's that. our I believe it's our intent to work with uh, KP Law to you know have that included. Um, Would that be part of the warrant then? Or part of that project, project, right? What's that? But through you, Madam Chair. Sorry. Yeah. So my understanding from our conversation with Town Council is they are project specific. Um, special acts so when we go forward at the special town meeting anticipated to take place in the fall we would be seeking the authorization under the special act to ensure the ability to recover compensatory privilege fees from any developed property <coughs> but that would be at the time the project is brought forward which will not be till the fall <coughs> so it's so, so it's okay to move these uh, by this bylaw forward as is and then work on the special legislation for that particular project um, at fall town meeting because it's going to take some time to get get that through the process I guess why wouldn't you put it all into one one meeting I'm just trying to follow the, 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 I'm just trying to follow yeah the bylaws are again general bylaws yeah general bylaws are generally speaking when you have road improvements when you have water improvements when you have sewer improvements this is the guideline of the, the platform that you're going to be operating from Special legislation, the only thing that's occurred to date is project specific. So in order to alter your general bylaws to treat specific projects differently, you need special legislation. So we wouldn't incorporate any language in a general bylaw to allow for that. 
and then the legislature probably wouldn't, wouldn't go for it anyway. They're not going to give you carte blanche. They're not going to give you any special legislation that they, unless they know what you're buying into or what the public's buying into. That's why we need to handle it as a special legislation specific to this project at the time when the project is approved. Again, as far as whether this bylaw is ever implemented, Will determine will be determined by town meeting when they agree to put sewerage in the community. If we never have sewerage, and we have already already have it on the books, that uh, doesn't do us any good if we don't have sewerage, right? Right. So as we go forward to town meeting and get the project specific project approved, we then seek special legislation in order to assess differently so that it's more fair. And uh, as Mr. Priest pointed out, and as you pointed out, so that's why it has to be. Project specific is supposed to include it into a general bylaw. I, I would just ask them that at you know at the town meeting that this town meeting that's coming up that this this extra information would be forthcoming to people because I think people are going to be wondering what I think at some point you're going to be asked the question you might as well add an extra slide or two to explain how that works out and what the future would look yep. like to get ahead of the curve because I think someone's going to be. If we are <laughs> but concerned again, about but that, right? even, even you know, and, and again, everybody sitting here is concerned about the single-family home yeah. dweller, yeah. you know, who again is not generating any income off of their home. Yeah. But again, once <coughs> this project is approved, you know, the value of their property is enhanced for a couple of reasons. One, from a, a Title V standpoint, yeah. and environmental standpoint, but also from an economic standpoint in relation to where they're situated and what can be done. Right. And again, if town meeting decides to rezone, and again, many of these single family homes, not necessarily in North Street, but at 28, uh, are already in a general business yeah. district. Right. They're already commercially zoned. Right. So that once sewage comes by their door, the value of that home is significantly enhanced. Mm -hmm. yeah. And therefore, the betterment is justified. And again, whether they decide to stay there or move on, it's the, it's the choice they get to make. Yeah. Same thing as far as tying in. But you know, for the for people on North Street and part of Park Street and Concord Street, again, right now, it's currently zoned just single family homes. Yeah, they're, they're, we want to make sure that they're treated uh, fairly in relation to the value and enhancement of this project in the entire project, in relation to the entire project. Yeah. So we're cognizant of it. That's going to require special legislation to allow us to address that. And it's our intention to move forward yeah. with that. And I think it's a good suggestion that uh, we would ensure that that would be discussed. Yeah. And to prevent a windfall for the, again, it's the land owners, not the people who own the building, not necessarily the people who are in it for right. commercial. Right. You know, we don't want to have a windfall go the other way. So, you know, explanation about that as well. I mean, there can be a windfall, but let's. But what, what we're anticipating, but again, what everybody <laughs> is anticipating when this project is approved is that there would be an economic opportunity for. Um, not just the landowners, the property owners here, but for the town as a whole, because again, as the value of those properties go up, the share the tax revenue generated by them is going to be a greater share than on the, you know, instead of being, you know, eight to ten percent commercial industrial, uh, where the single residential homes are bearing the burden, the, yeah. the bulk of the burden, it's going to be shared more with the uh, commercial yeah. industrial. So the, the economic development potential is, is much more significant with this project is approved. And again, as those property owners decide to develop, we want to be able to assess them differently. Yeah, absolutely. Based upon that, and that's what the special legislation will do. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone have any more questions? I know I have more questions for, uh, about this. So, oh, thank you. Again, just getting back to the way this is presented in the warrant article, I understand that you have to strike through some text. I, I just don't understand why. I'm really not understanding why 25.2 is there still, even after you explained it to me. If you didn't make any changes to it, I don't understand. It's very confusing to me. Um, and I understand the, the forethought of putting this on the warrant article for a vote, but how many, um, how many commercial parcels and how many residential parcels are along this, this routing that is going to be? is going to have the sewer running. Yeah, I, I don't have those numbers with me tonight, but uh, it's substantially com more commercial industrial than it is residential. Uh, depending on how you really look at it, I guess. There's some large parcels, the condo parcels. Um, certainly, if you look at that as individual ownership, then 
that I think there's a significant number of residential properties being impacted. So, well, that's, I mean, part of, I, I'm trying to understand this now, and I don't understand the reference, and again, as a lay person, to how it's going to be assessed. And I've heard three or four different things, even though it's tied into the statute. So that might be something that more needs to be fleshed out, because it, I don't understand here. It seems like it's up in the air how it's going to be decided, who's going to be assessed, and how. And now I would assume, just given what you just said about the condominiums, for example, there's complexes with multiple condominiums, and I would have assumed that the the, the trust is going to get an assessment, but based on what you said, each individual condominium owner is going to get assessed, right? Correct. So those would be what separate residential units that you're counting into this. Correct. They have separate um, tax, tax bills. bills. Yeah. So and then the other th the, so I would want to know how many are impacted and before we get a runaway train that's going to charge more for a business than uh, you know a residential parcel which I think is completely unfair because we're waiting on a feasibility study that we saw in one of the you know the timelines to see the return on investment here and the whole purpose of us or one of the whole purposes of in addition to obviously the health benefits to it is to encourage some economic growth. So we're already assuming now we're going to start charging a higher assessment. I mean, we don't even, it's, it's, it's really up in the air, and I think it, some more concrete example or discussion or explanation is kind of important. It's something you know in this field, but it's something, as I read this, as a layperson, and as I assume other town voters are going to read it, they're not going to know what that means, uniform unit method. I don't, I still don't understand it, and it seems like there's a lot of leeway in determining that that you s sound like you have. There, there is leeway in determining unit methods, you know, uniform unit methods, but it's not wildly, you know, um, different from community to community when they look at, you know, water or sewer usage. Um, as the basis uh, for assessments, because obviously that's that's what we're that's the commodity here, right? Okay. So, so whether it's you know actual water usage or something that's a design flow from Title Five uh, codes, you know, in the in statute allows for assessments of the highest and best use according to the current zoning. So I can see three different ways, and in fact, we are looking at three different methods, if you will, of looking at the assessments based on th those characters. Actual water use, current Title V use, uh, water flow, and then what it would be for total build-out or potential build-out, you know, based on the size of the property and what, what the building area could be on that. But that isn't something that is recommended by KP Law to put into a bylaw. No, I understand the by that. Right, the bylaw is the framework. But and this the, the is details. for our information. Oh, sure. And, um, so that's yeah. why I'm asking sure. you this, because this is the first time we've seen it. We have some beautifully built brand new buildings there that maybe use the storage as an example. It maybe uses no, hardly any water. Maybe just the manager using the bathroom a few times a day. Exactly. Right? And that's probably not going to change its use until maybe decades down the line, right? But, but what it sounds to me like you're saying is those might just get assessed for their highest and best use, even though they, they already have a, they've already developed it to a specific use. That's not going to matter. So that's why That's what we're doing it, correct. Okay. And the other is based on its actual, you right. know, actual use. But who actually decides that? I think ultimately it would be the sewer commissioners, which would be you. Okay, and then, then the first paragraph takes the provision and then we would decide that and then it goes to the town for a vote of approval. Um, that's what it says here. Well, no, it, it says that town meeting can, can step in and decide a, a different percentage for a specific project, you know. And, and whether that's, you know, pretty much the same, the same project we're talking about here. Um, the one and only project, perhaps. Um, you can decide a percentage, and perhaps town meeting steps in and says, 
we want a different percentage. So, so as commissioners, the language is there for you to decide, but they, but it's also there for town meeting to decide. Okay, so the way that it's written as projects, it doesn't just mean there's one project; it means future projects. They could they could step in on some future project as well and make a decision on it. Like running it down a, a road, Mill Street or not a road or something like running it down there would be a separate project. A separate project, they would have a, a separate opportunity to choose some other percentages later. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other are we all any other Mr. Mr. Studo. I would make a, like just a comment that I think like speaking of the storage facility, which obvious, right? I mean um, from some of the meetings I've been involved for that specific at CPC as liaison, I can tell you that in my opinion, just it seems like there's already some changes the gentleman wanted to make. I, I just think that whatever the future use can be that sewer opens up, I'm gonna find it very hard to believe that something as mundane like that storage unit will stay a storage unit. I, again, I'm just making an observation based on what I've heard from multiple business owners just doing regular things at CPC, so you learn a lot. And it's just like, I've definitely heard of things where apprehension of plans has been more septic related. So I just, you know, just something to say that we do have to find that happy medium, but I do think that there, I mean, a smart business person is going to see the value of their property and try to maximize it within the guidelines of the town. I mean, I don't think anyone, and I, I'm not, I don't want to pick on that, but in general. Oh, I know, but they've that, already done that at this point. But I'm point. just saying that, like, if tomorrow for, I mean, I didn't know, for example, that some of these single families are on already zoned commercial, but I can tell you that if I own a single family, you know, maybe on Main Street, and I could theoretically sell it for somebody who wants to develop and go buy a single family in another part of town or even in a, like in a, in a more quiet road and cash out or do something with it. I just think that we should at least look at what that would look like because I, I feel like most people like to take advantage of economic opportunity if they can. There's those that never will, right? I mean, there's not, I don't want to generalize, but again, I, I feel like I just wanted to say that the, there should be in the future, because it's going to get decided at town meeting, like there should be a, a happy meeting. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be all or nothing. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it needs to be not just a guesswork. And I, where are we at with that feasibility study, too? Because I think that would tend to demonstrate the importance of this, especially if we're doing the bylaw. So, as I presented at the, uh, the last time we. Uh, looked at water sewer updates. It was a June uh, presentation for the sewer assessments, the, the pop one, if you will, the financial piece of it, and the the, uh, the second phase, <coughs> the market analysis, um, you know, would be in uh, the summer time. So, so we're coming upon the the first part, you know, talking about. You know, the calculation of sewer units, looking at the methods of assess of uh, determining sewer units, uh, whether it be actual water use or, you know, Title V to current use or Title V to some highest and best use of zoning. <coughs> so that's coming up. I think what was there was a com how we're going to pay for it, right? This is a component of uh, one so piece the, the, of how so we're Yeah, so that's, 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 you know, part one of being well. Part 1A, you know, there is a component of, you know, the, the, the cost of the project, the betterments that will be generated based on the various, you know, assessments. Assuming, you know, you choose 100% of the assessment, 100% uh, of the project to be assessed, then that goes into the equation and, and you'll have a betterment assessment. That cash flow over, say, the maximum 30 years and all the other you know, maybe grant opportunities you can consider, like the sale of land um, of funds to offset any kind of cost of the project as well. So, so that will all be before you as far as a, a financing of the project. But are you working with the, the, the individuals who are the experts that are preparing the feasibility study? Because we, I would assume this, component came up 
and so you'd have factored in how many commercial, how many residential. That's correct. We've been this analysis, the data. it might generate this, and that analysis it might. I mean, I'm assuming this is part of that. So we would want to know. I think those. This is all part of a whole. You know. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm in close, uh, keeping close uh, discussions with them as well as others um, within different departments, the assessors, the finance, uh, planning. Um, so we, we have update check-in meetings and we talk about specific parts of the scope of their work and, you know, give them additional information or some guidance. Um, like today I had discussion with the bylaws that we're, we have here and, and modifying what they've been working on as far as their spreadsheet to calculate betterment so that it, it sort of relates to the different ways that we could break down the cost and assess the cost. Um, the methods as we talked about, the three different ones that we're looking at, um, that they're, they're working on that in their spreadsheet. So all that will be brought back in a presentation for some more detailed discussions. And that's ready to go. You mean before the June meeting, before the June town meeting? Uh, well, that we don't have a lot of time before then, and I would think that we'd get some pretty. I mean, it doesn't have to be before focus. the June town meeting. I mean, because those are the details of better assessments that will come later. But it, it can. I mean, I, we were shooting for a June one, but I think it's up to you whether you want to put that on the agenda or not. Well, if this is just a warrant. I think we're. We're sponsoring it, and so I think we really need some more directed. I I do, but I'm only one out of five people, so I could be completely off base with it. But I I think we need some more concrete. You want to have a better understanding of the details before this this town meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. How many Understood. houses is this going to hit for assessment? How many commercial properties? How many pieces of vacant land that are undeveloped there are going to get? Hitting. How are you going to calculate those? They're not using any water other than the water that's on the lot. So absolutely, I would think that's really formulating, that's the data that is being incorporated into the, I'm assuming the feasibility study so that where that's been in progress now for a while. They, they have all that information, a parcel by parcel um, listing that would be impacted by the, the project. Okay. In, you know, its current use, all the information that is provided out of the assessor's database for each property. Okay. So, so yeah, that's easily, you know, uh, shared and uh, tallied. Okay. I think we, w we, should, we should have some more sense of it, too, especially because, like I said, we're the sponsor of this, just seeing this now, taking a vote on <coughs> Warren. Mr. O'Leary. I think we have to keep the issues separate what we're it doesn't sound like th that though no, no 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 let me just uh, what, what we're trying to do here right now is amend the bylaw so that whether it be the project that we're proposing going to be proposing this fall or one three years from now ten years from now or thirty years from now the way that it's going to be handled by the sewer commission which is basically the board of selectmen all right allows for uh, the requisite flexibility rather than the rigidity of the current bylaw. In, in my 49 years of having been elected public official here, this is the closest we have ever come to bringing a legitimate sewer project to town meeting for consideration. So now it becomes more realistic as to what do we have in place from a general bylaw standpoint? Right. Does it work? It doesn't work well for the community as a whole. Uh, we came to the conclusion that it doesn't. It's too rigid. Uh, we may end up at a 50-50, okay. but we may end up 60-40, maybe 20-80. Who knows what we're going to end up with, depending upon project-specific um, What do we get for funding, what, in other words? So, so yeah. what I'm saying is I think right now we just need to focus on, does the bylaw need amending to be adjusted, not just for this fall, but for looking forward? Because I'm hopeful that this project that we're proposing here is going to, we're going to have all the answers to the questions that people have and it'll be satisfactory to enough of them that the project prevails and it goes through. But even if it doesn't, this bylaw needs to be addressed. And this, again, from a timing standpoint, puts the project in the forefront because it's starting to come to fruition here and you're going to have something to talk about. 
but give us the tools to implement it, meaning the, the select board, when it comes to it. So it's, it's two separate issues in relation to the specific. I understand how it's, it's easily confused, but I think it's important for us to say, we're putting this forth so that if this comes to fruition and Tommy decides to act favorably on this this fall, we have a mechanism in place to make the pr appropriate determination to, to be fair to everybody. Right now, we don't have that. And that, that's all we're asking for. As far as the specifics, you know, I, I think, I, I don't want a, a financial presentation to this board to be too premature because it would just lead to more questions than giving you the requisite information uh, to make an informed decision. So I don't know. I, I think you know, pushing through June 1st for this feasibility study to be presented to this board is a little too soon. You know, I, my feeling being a little bit close to it. Here. It wasn't my intention or expectation to have that connected necessarily to this bylaw. The bylaw needs to be adjusted and needs to be tweaked, and that's what we're proposing now. The specifics of the project, the financial feasibility of it, the uh, potential future impact of it, that's for <coughs> in June, this is for the June, July, August, September, October, and then how many will vote. Uh, but we need to adjust the, the mechanism by which we can assess because then that will allow us to make a, a determination to inform the public in October saying, this is how we're planning on doing it. Okay. I have a question though, Mr. O'Leary, because again, I'm trying to understand the language as it's written. I get it. So I, I understand instead of it being the town pays up to 50%, etc., that first paragraph doesn't refer to how the process is in private assessment. So I don't understand why that's in there. But then that first paragraph refers to the last paragraph that's in there, or the last section that's in there, which also under 25-4A1 <coughs> says the sewer commissioners can determine the percentage, let's say up to 100. But do you understand as I'm reading it that except for certain projects which are undefined in this, that goes to a town vote? Because that's how it reads. What what what's so, being proposed, so it ultimately I, I, I understand, but what, what really what's being proposed is this, the sewer commission, which is the select board, you know, can establish up to 100%. But they can also determine, have their discussion, and they can determine that they want to bring it to town meeting for ratification. Or, again, sewer commissioners make a determination, and someone in the public says, that's not fair, that's not right, I'm going to put in a citizen petition, and town meeting's going to either bless what you did, or change it. So there's, you know, there's really three different methodologies that's allowed for in the proposed <coughs> thing. Sewer Commission makes a determination, done. Sewer Commission determines that they want to bring it to town meeting, do that. Or Sewer Commission makes a determination and town meeting says, we're going to take a look at this and we're going to either ratify what you did or change it. And town meeting would have the ultimate authority if it goes that route. Okay. I don't read it that way. So that's why I had so many questions. Nope, oh, that's good. It's good that you have the questions. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get it clarified and uh, okay. it will speak with town council to see if there's a better way of uh, working. working with it within the four corners of what's been presented. Okay. Which I'm sure it would be allowed. <coughs> All right. So, any other questions? Mr. Okay. Yeah, it just, it's just a timing. It's just, for me, it's kind of a timing thing. Like, just by introducing this, it's going to raise the very questions we've asked. And so, I understand where you're going. I understand you're going to put in some extra levels of protection and stuff. But I think what people are going to hear is, you know, if I live on the street, I'm going to be impacted a huge amount. And they're going to be very upset, not knowing the particulars. And until we have the particulars, you can't really answer the question. So I'm wondering if we're just, you know, if you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Um, if, if, unless you tell me that it has to be done now because <coughs> that's the timing of everything else that lines up, then we should probably express that. But without the extra information, if I'm a person who lives on that street and I'm living in a private residence, I'm going to not give me enough answers to fill the interviews. Okay. 
the, 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 the so it's a for me, it's a timing. Yeah, no, I Mr. If we don't amend this bylaw, then the only thing that we can do is tell people that the town is going to absorb 50% of the cost. No, no, I'm not saying we no, don't. I know, I'm not saying we don't do that. I'm just saying when when do you change the bylaw? Do you change it now? Well, we can't. Do we can't do the finance. Totally? We can't do the financial aspects of it. You know, unless we have the flexibility within the bylaw to do it. Otherwise, we're locked into the bylaw right now. So, you know, we could talk wish women a maybe, you know, and hope that, you know, come next October, when we, along with the whole project, the whole assessment stuff and everything else will not have been determined yet. You know, or then we're going to get into, well, no, it should be 60-40, it should be, you know, 80-20, it should be this. You know, we're going to be presenting a project with a, with a, a split cost assessment at the special town meeting in the fall. We can't do that if the bylaw is in place. And then you're going to be debating the merits of 60, 20, 80, 40, you know, whereas we will have been able to make a determination based upon all the information we have to say this is the project and this is what it's going to cost you based upon where you live, you know. And yeah, the people who will live along the, the, the route, Part of what this bylaw does, again, part of the reason I would like to see it now, is it, it just brings it all to the forefront, raises all the questions, gives us three months to answer those questions, and either satisfactorily or unsatisfactorily, depending on where you're sitting uh, on the issue, uh, but it brings it to the forefront. And again, I think we, will sh we should be able to, at town meeting, say, listen, this is a separate issue. It, this will be a direct impact on the project that's going to be proposed, but if we don't enact this, we can't tweak it. We can't be more fair to the residential dwellers over here yeah. if we don't have that flexibility. Yeah. So we're looking for the flexibility for this project specific, you know, in the fall, but for future ones also and for future expansion if we go into other neighborhoods. Yeah. Again, we have additional capacity here that we're looking to build in so that in another generation, future town meetings can determine to expand and we can treat people fairly as opposed to cut and dry, yep. this is how it is. So, so again, it just, yep. yes, it brings up, brings us to the forefront, it does raise questions, and that's good. To me, that's good. Yeah. That's good. You know, and if we can get people to understand, you know, what we're proposing here is, yes, we want you to be aware of what's going to be proposed to you this fall, but in order to give us the necessary tools to adjust it appropriately, we need this fixed. So, again, I'll say, let's have a slide that expresses that up front so that way people understand how this fits into the puzzle right but we do yeah, but we do want people to to be engaged we no, want no, to I'm engage as many people as we can just I, I understand yeah. what you're saying you can change this bylaw but if you don't have the sewage doesn't make any difference anyways right so you're trying to like match up the return on investment the feasibility study with the flexibility so that by the time you get to october or the special meeting we'll be able you're able to say this is what we can do but without that you don't know what you can do no, we know we, we know we can't do. Right, so that's why I'm saying if you can express that up front, that would help people understand how this fits in. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. So that's what I'm suggesting is just add that on to it, and that would give people at least a reason, rationale about why it needs to come up now and not later. Yeah, it is a timing thing based on what it's Mr. O'Leary said. It's yeah. a timing thing. Are you all set, Mr. O'Leary? I am also set. Ms. Gonzalez. I, I, I'm just agreeing with if we're going to vote this forward that we do need to have more information, have these questions answered for town meeting be able to show it to everybody okay good any of mr Gilberto? just a clarifying question is it sure. the board's preference to have that more detailed presentation from the consultant take place on june 1st or or are we do we not wish to do so I, don't think you can have it. up, I mean i mean it, it just i understand now from mr o'leary's explanation and I think we all do the timing aspect of it. I, and I think it, this is one mechanism of being able to afford it, even though all the specifics aren't ironed out, at least it opens up the leeway to do that. I think it's important to give some type of thing that explains how many parcels are, there are and how many parcels are you know, gonna be assessed and how many parts. I think that's a that's just basics. We should know that by now. Yeah. I mean we've been working on I this for years. Chair, maybe I think maybe we should do two things. Well, let me just Mr. Studo, I just, Mr. Studo that had his hand raised. Let me just 
speak to Mr. Let Mr. Studo, whatever your comment is, because he's really quiet tonight. So let's give him a chance. To. <laughs> Mr. Studo. Well, I've been talking all day, so I don't mind the quiet. Um, so to answer it, I mean, if you met by the June 1st for the ROI report, the feasibility study. Yeah, that won't be done. In time. No, no, that I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're. I, I think I want to say that maybe, to Mr. Walner's point, maybe a, with the presentation, a clarifying statement on some of these points, like to preempt that you know it's yeah. something where I, I feel like to me, if I was looking at this from town meeting, it just it's a general change of a bylaw for present and future products. Uh, uh, project. projects <laughs> so I feel like just making that clear will I mean I, but that's what however the wording I know madam chair you can agree how the wording but like no. that's really but that's really what it is but also making it very clear that all that's being approved is the change of a, a, a process like a changing of what the process or what the select board could theoretically do and then what the town could do as well <laughs> like nothing nothing else is happening so I just I just don't want it to turn into this thing that, like, by doing this, then this happens. Because nothing really happens. That's a great point, and I, I missed it. That, that's a great point. And if I'm here reading this, and I'm on that line, or I'm on that potential line, I'm reading this saying, oh my God, I'm going to pay 100% of this $110 million project. There's no way I can afford to remain well, that's not what we're saying. That's not what we're saying, but that's what I'm telling you. A person is going to look at that, or a property owner is going to look at that who's on that line. So I think the more of what Mr. O'Leary is explaining, this is just one piece of the ability to determine pay, because we are looking into other payment options. But I think that's how someone's going to read that. They're going to say, I'm on the line. It's saying, now they're going to be able to assess 100% of the cost to anybody that's on the line. That's me. That's how they're going to read that. Not esoteric they're changing a bylaw we're putting a sewer line in they're going to know exactly that it's related to the putting in of the sewer line and the millions of dollars that's going to cost mr I, I think uh, let's have you have the final say on this oh okay. i don't know I don't, I don't need final say but I, you know, my suggestion is is that the, the wastewater study committee and <coughs> the team here uh, should be making a presentation to the june town meeting in the form of a report anyway which will give us give the town meeting and the community a detailed understanding as to where we are in the process and where we anticipate being in the fall. But this is where, we're, where we are. And if it's part of that process and that presentation, you're also going to be presented with an article tonight for consideration, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. one small piece of the puzzle to allow us the flexibility to properly assess those that are right there, those are going to be the users and future users, you know, as opposed to people on the other side of town who are not going to get any true betterment from this uh, right off the bat. So I, I think we can separate it, you know, if we, the wastewater, wastewater study committee goes and gives, gives a report, town meeting, and references the article that's in the, in the warrant, and then when we get to the warrant article, say, yeah, th as we spoke about it, this is what we're yes. talking about. Yeah. And I think that would help yeah. separate. Okay. Does that answer, Mr. Gilbert? Because you've heard, there's no way that we're going to have that. No. We're all waiting for it, but that, sh that doesn't mean it shouldn't be intensely focused on so that we can get information sooner rather than later, so we can digest it ourselves, too. But I think that's, is that the collective? Mm -hmm. Yep. Everybody's shaking their head yes, so that's the plan. And then that, really, that, <laughs> that, if you look at that first paragraph, it's not saying what you're saying it means, so... It looks like we're going to, as so, not we, but the Board of Sewer Commissioners is going to decide a percentage provided that, which then means it has to go to town meeting for an approval. You are saying something different to how it's worded. So we, we want to we make sure We will take a look at that, and uh, I'm sure the moderator will allow for a, a motion to be more clear that would be within the four corners of the article. We'll speak to town council about it and get it clarified. Because we have to vote for this tonight, right, Mr. Gilberto, so Correct. it goes out? Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair. Mr. Gilberto. Just one 
piece of information. There was a draft of this that was in the packet that identified the select board as a sponsor. I since corrected that in the version for the copy uh, to be signed to reflect Department of Public Works as a sponsor. However, if the board wanted to take over sponsorship, I'm sure the department wouldn't object to it. And uh, so I just, I would point that out because I. <laughs> But I, what did you put that in the packet today? It, yeah, d d so later today we corrected something in the version right. of it. Sorry. So that would be something we could just look at here and when we come to the meeting in paper, we're not going to catch it. If it's and that's why I'm bringing it up. I know you wouldn't have caught it. Does anybody raise your hand, please? Show of hands if it matters to you who's sponsoring this select board. Select board. It matters to me. Yes. Mr. Either we own this or we don't. I'm Absolutely. not looking to. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm saying because we're the sponsor, we have to know what it says, and it, we're just seeing it for the first time. So, yep. select board. Yep. We're all in favor of being the sponsor. So there's not, not, no offense to <laughs> you. Okay. But I mean, <laughs> he's happy to turn it over. But that doesn't mean that we can't, we shouldn't have a succinct presentation of the information so that it's really clear what you've been working on because we know you've been pouring hours and hours and hours yeah. into this mm -hmm. we need some concrete information for town meeting for sure thank you you're not off the hook in other words. <laughs> <laughs> okay Make us look good. <laughs> <laughs> that was miss as mrs Gonzalez says that was my mom voice so i apologize <laughs> <laughs> my mom tone all right so do we have a motion now thank you by the way for that the yeah. presentation and the answers yeah. and all that uh, oh, I'm looking at Mr. Sudo, Mr. Walnut. <laughs> so, so are we ready to do the town meeting more? Is that the only discussion? We're oh, I actually, did we want to go through uh, with regard just to quick, quick, briefly go through before we take a vote? I believe that this is everything that we've already reviewed the past few meetings and incorporates the fire chiefs. Um, That's way down there. No, we're voting to sign this right yeah. now. Then we'll do the review later. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'm just asking the members. I don't want to add anything. Do you add anything? And I'm not looking to is there anything, anything. Just in terms of prior to this vote, is there anything you have a question on? And, and Mr. Studios, are we going to have a we're going to have a more detailed review of all the articles? But, but it'll it's already be voted if you have a question. It's already voted to send it to Warren, and we've actually already looked at all of these and had presentations on them, except with the exception of this one which Correct. we've been waiting on. Any other questions? Yeah, the only one is on the Forest Committee, I know we we gave you some language, but I didn't see that in the packet today. Uh, article 27? Yeah, and i got to find it, but I didn't see so, yeah, the, the language Warren article may be different than, page a, than the motion. Page 48. I mean page... I don't it's page, know. page 40 of the packet. But the Warren yeah. article may be yes. different than the motion, though. W w I'm sorry, I just I don't know what the additional information is, I'm sorry. So there's that one paragraph, I'm not looking at it right now, but the one paragraph was there and then we added on, last so week, we added on additional details about that. So the, uh, there's some to language. To be printed in the warrant, including a map. So, there'll be, so there will be a description that will go with the warrant and that language we will incorporate into the description. It doesn't go in this version. This version is posted by the constable at Ryers and at a number okay. of other public okay. spots. All right, so it's it, will, up later. it will, but it just okay. this is a version that is only posted publicly. The description, the maps, all of that goes in the the version that's mailed to all the residents, and that information will be in there. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, now I understand. <laughs> yeah, it does actually have the length a little bit more in it that, than what what was originally talked about. But yeah. so did you read that paragraph? I, and that's I, fine. I did, but I was there's things yeah. missing. So yeah, but. That's okay. Well, the, the visual coming. portions of it, but the trail improvements is in there. Uh, and the, maybe um, I saw the line because I didn't see it. Conceptual plans for trail improvements. Oh, trail right. system, smart pond. Maybe I have an old packet or something. Conceptual plans see it. for trail. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, All that's, that's that we just asked. talked about at the last meeting. Yeah, well, I knew we talked about it, but we hadn't added it until the last right. meeting. Right. Okay. That looks to be everything no, that's that, it. Was that's, that, that was in the presentation. Didn't see it for some reason. All right, so any other Are questions? Are we good? Now do we have a motion? Okay, Madam Chair, I move to sign the June 6, 2022 Spring Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. Studo. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank and there should be a version there to be signed for right. the constable, Mr. Lab, who's here this evening. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
All right, we can move on. Our next order of business is a Sunday entertainment license for ultra chic. Do we need Mr. Gilberto here? One minute. We do need Mr. Gilberto. Sorry, Madam Chair. Is that the warrant? That That's the corrected use? page. <laughs> <laughs> next uh, order of business Sunday. Entertainment license, Ultra Chic Events, LLC, doing business as Ultra Chic Events at Hillview Country Club. And we have the licensee here, but Mr. Gilberto is here. Is this something that we just overlooked in terms of the application that we already approved? Correct, yes, Madam Chair. And, and do we want to do... Do you want to give us a little quick, introduce yourselves and give, give us just a quick rundown of the entertainment that you're going to be offering there? You don't have to, one, two, one, two, three, letting us know. Um, basically the same thing as the sorry, I'm sorry, kids. And just state your name for the record. You're our licensee. Yes, Fabiana Santos. Um, it's basically going to continue on. It's the same thing as a Saturday event. It'll be a wedding, birthday, Regular celebrations. So music, bands, music, dancing, bands, dancing, DJ. DJ. All right. And any other questions? Do we have a motion? Oh, uh, yep. Madam Chair, I move to grant a Sunder Entertainment license to Ultra Chic Events LLC, doing business as Ultra Chic, Chic Events at Hillview Country Club to expire December 31, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> Learning a lot more than you ever wanted to know. <laughs> you guys are amazing. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Amazingly boring. Yeah. All right, next order of business is to receive the recommendation of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and a vote to approve the fiscal year 2023 capital improvement plan to be submitted to spring annual town meeting. Welcome, Mr. Callagher. Thank you. Take it away. I think you have... Excuse me, Madam Chair. Oh. You haven't finished signing the warrant, so our constable uh, can... It's being oh. passed the warrant, right, I think. We're almost there. The warrant. Yeah, there we go. Steve, did you already sign? Yeah. Okay. Is it not, you can't hear? No, I thought oh. maybe somebody might want to hear me. <laughs> too. Maybe I should turn around the other way. We do. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, um, is, as I stated in the, the memo attached to the recommendations, uh, went through our, our normal process of meeting with department heads, uh, looking at their recommendations, asking questions, uh, getting more information, um, and then the uh, individual members of the committee uh, evaluated those recommendations and ranked them on a scale of zero to five, five being, being the most important. And we then brought all of that together and got a, an overall average recommendation. So we just put all of the projects in line, look at them, and see where they, they stood relative to each other. And um, so, and what the result of that is the, what we'll call the ranking sheet, it's, it's more than that, it, it, the ranking came out of this, and then we uh, looked to see what we could afford. We received over $7.7 .7 million in requests from the municipal departments and the school department. Uh, Hillview and Water Enterprise requested 400,000 and 2.4 million respectively. So we had a, a big number that we were uh, considering. Now we'll go over the, the individual details of what projects we're recommending, which we're not recommending, and why in, in both cases. Uh, we ended up recommending among the uh, municipal and school requests almost $3.4 million um, in funding. And 
something different this year. We, we were the beneficiary of some grants from the state uh, that were able to apply to some of the projects um, so that we didn't have to depend upon bonding and available cash uh, that would come into the uh, capital growth stabilization fund. Uh, the grants from the Commonwealth amounted to about $523,000. And I'm going to go through when we get into the individuals. We'll look at, at what, what we're doing with that money. Uh, There's $475,000 in free cash from, from the town. Um, we had a one time ability to uh, apply some accumulated bond premiums that had been uh, held by the town on previous uh, bond issues. Uh, that could be used to offset the cost of uh, projects that have a light duration. And we've elected or recommending electing to do that uh, so as to uh, help fund some of the, the projects. We're recommending about $470,000 from the uh, funds that are available to the stabilization fund and then bonding about just under a million six. If we go to, and then with respect to the, the two enterprise funds, um, as we generally do, it, our, our, our evaluation of those, we look at the projects first to see whether or not they, they make sense. And they, they typically do. And the enterprise funds only goes forward with the projects that they're, they're looking for, if they can afford them. It's probably particularly true of, of, of Hillview. They've got to have sufficient revenue to be able to, or debt capacity to, to do the projects they're doing. And the same is true of the water enterprise as well. We thought that the, rec the, the requests that they made uh, of the committee made sense and that uh, they had the ability to, to carry out those, uh, those, those requests. So now I would go to, uh, very briefly, I want to just thank the committee. There they are. Uh, this is a. My name's Belgrave. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have, that happens to me all the time. Yeah, the Z at the end. I know, I know that. <laughs> we'll fix that. But there, there is the committee and uh, we have a lot, a lot of meetings and a lot, a lot of discussion. Um, and, uh, it's, it was a it was a struggle trying to trying to pull all of this together, meeting different times of the day, and uh, uh, we did get through the, the process. So, so I, I thank you. For it. This is not the one person operation. This is the, the folks you see up there. All right, on to. Can we make this any bigger? Okay, good. So when I talked about what we had. We'll slide up just a little bit below this and get the total. For the members, it's, it's on page 43 of our packet. In your, in your, okay. Yeah, so there's the seven, the $7 million, um, $7.7 million. That's the entire list of items that were requested. Let's, let's start at the top. Um, column headings, uh, other than the descriptions, of course, are pretty obvious. Uh, the, the first dollar call there is the amount of the project that is, is being uh, requested. The next column where it says grants, fees, ca uh, grants, free cash, etc. That's funding that is not going to have to come out of bonding or out of the, uh, the money that is made available to the, the, uh, uh, the stabilization fund. So in the example of the, the wireless radios, uh, for the um, fire department, the state provided seventy-five thousand dollars in grant money, uh, and we're recommending spending the other thirty-nine thousand uh, dollars to pay for that out of out of cash available through the the program itself. Uh, the life pack, uh, another fire department request that is being entirely paid by a grant from the uh, the state. 
uh, the roadway rehabilitation and reconstruction. Uh, the request this year was for $900,000. Uh, we're, we're going to bond, uh, recommending bonding $500,000 and $400,000 is uh, going to be uh, 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 provided by free cash. The turf field is, is the one where we are using some, some of the bond premium. The total cost of that is $486,000. We've got a grant from the state for $100,000, and we had another $356,000 in available bond premiums that we could apply to this 10-year this project which left us only a $30,000 balance, which would be paid for out of the, the cash in the, in the, uh, in the plan. Uh, the Park Free Bridge design is, a, is the design project. is a $200,000 project. The state has, has given us a $100,000 grant. And the other $100,000, again, would be paid in cash, where this is a design project rather than the construction itself uh, would have a maximum bonding of this of five years in any any event and we we decided that it would make more sense to just to pay for it when the project comes along um, uh, for construction uh, and that may be next year maybe further down the road we're not sure uh, then that would be bonded for a longer time we had four requests for intersection improvements. Um, the first one you see here is Haverhill Street and Chestnut. If you go down into the section where it's been not being recommended, there are three others. Uh, the second item in, under DP, uh, the first item under DPW Engineering, Central and North Street, then Central and Park, and a little further down, Park and Concord Street. Uh, these are all important safety issues in the town. Um, when we looked at this as a single project to do it all in one year, it, it really was cost prohibitive because it would have just dwarfed everything else on here. We would have had to, to not do other important projects. So we talked to the DPW director about the possibility of breaking this into two pieces and doing what, what is deemed to be the, the most pressing uh, intersection, Haverhill and Chestnut Street, this year, and proposing that we do the other three uh, next year. So there is a, there's a $580,000 price tag on, on the Haverhill and Chestnut Street project. Uh, there is grant money available, $100,000 we were given by the state leaving us uh, with a uh, $480,000 item to be bonded, and we are going to be bonding that, or recommending bonding that for, I believe, 30 years. Um, the upgrade to the library bathrooms, this has been kicked around for a couple of years, and what we needed to do, it's a $60,000 project. The state came up with $40,000 for it, so it left only a $20,000 cash item to get this completed. Uh, the exterior of the library, we've been committed to doing this for the last several years and have been doing pieces of it and it just keeps growing. As you would expect in a building of that age, the more you get into it and start doing the work, you find more things that need to be done. And so this is, the, I believe, the third funding of this project uh, over the last several years. Uh, this final $80,000 should get done all of the exterior work that, uh, that we had contemplated doing. Uh, and that would be a bonded item. The uh, tech, instruct, yeah, instructional technology, this is for the schools. These are smart boards and like these are not, not the one-on-one -on -one computers. These are, uh, I believe, primarily in the elementary school, but I may be wrong on that. that was certainly right. um, we're trying to provide some technology funding for uh, both the school and the next item for the municipal government every every year. 
just to keep things fresh, uh, not get out of, get out of date, make sure that the equipment that we're uh, asking people to, to use is, is, is up to date as so we can reasonably make it. Make it uh, uh, so that's those two items, and they're, they, would, they would be paid for in cash because they're relatively short lives in those. Um, the Little School HVAC upgrade phase two. Um, these, these are rooftop units that uh, uh, are in need of repair. The building is getting old. They've been taking very, very good care of it. Uh, we've made a lot of improvements to it over the past several years. Uh, this will provide better uh, air in, in one wing of the school. We thought that that was important, particularly in the uh, the, the pandemic era that we're, we're, we're living through and probably going to be living through at the same time. Uh, police department, hot water, heater replacement. Um, this is a, an industrial uh, uh, type of heating, or, um, I'll say system, it's a tankless seat heating system that will provide hot water to all of the, uh, the, the uh, the water needs in the in the, uh, in the station and uh, the old tank system that they have uh, needs to be replaced. There is sediment that is building in that and spreading through some of the pipes and causing some problems. So this need, needs to be upgraded. Uh, town hall office split units. Uh, this is a, a heat in an AC unit that will go into the, the buildings like is behind us here uh, that is not in some of the the parts of the, the building now that really really need that, that upgrade. Um, the highway department is wants to replace a, uh, a dump truck, a F-350 dump truck. 2007 uh, highway department keeps their vehicles a long time and uh, when they need to be replaced, they need to be replaced. We, we, we try to be responsive to their requests so as to keep the, the fleet as, uh, as up to date as possible. So 2007 to 2022 is a pretty, pretty good life for, for a piece of equipment like that. Um, and uh, so we're recommending that. Uh, the elementary rooftop units I believe these are in the hood. I'm not sure, but it's similar to what we're doing with the little school. Uh, the electronic uh, message boards, this is a request to the fire department. We've got one message board now. Um, it, uh, it's, it's, it's old, it's, it needs, needs to be replace the, the fire chief has asked for two of them so that they can be located in different parts of the town uh, delivering messages that need to be done on a timely basis um, forty four thousand dollars and uh, uh, that is a cash item there may be some money coming from the state to help with this we're not we're not sure yet but I that uh, representative Jones has, has applied for something and it, it's got to get through the legislature to be approved but there may be an offset to this. Uh, the full-size pickup truck, this is replacing a Ford Explorer, a, a 2013 Ford Explorer that was in the DPW uh, fleet. Uh, obviously, you're not going to do any plowing with the Explorer. This would be a full-size pickup that would also be useful in, in plowing snow. Uh, and the, the last item in this grouping is, and something we started doing last year, is some si sidewalk repair and tree removal. Um, and there is a, as it was last year, a $75,000 request. Uh, and this is going to be, uh, we're recommending funding this through the free cash. On the right hand side, the average column, that's the ranking. So this is a scale of zero to five. So as you can see, the very first, the fire department uh, items were ranked as five, down to four, seven, four, six, four, 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 four point zero, and so forth. The cutoff here came at, at about uh, a three, and that is the, the, uh, the sidewalk repair and tree removal. 
The next item down ranked oh, significantly higher than uh, a number of the, uh, the uh, items that are being recommended. And the only reason this is not being recommended now is we can't afford it. A million and a half dollar item uh, with a 30-year life um, will we'll have a debt service of over $100,000 a year. I think the first year this was like $117,000. Uh, that's more than, than the, the budget can, can accommodate. Um, it's important that it be done. Uh, we, we're deferring, we're not, not, not recommending, we're deferring it until October. <coughs> And the hope is that in October there may be some federal money or that we will be able to use the opera money to, to pay for this item. Uh, it's, it's important to do, this would tie in the batch, uh, the fire station, the police station, uh, Game and Tavern, the library. I think that may be mm -hmm. all. Not the building of the environment? 30, the third building house, yeah. yes. as well. Into the, the wastewater treatment plant at the middle school, high school. Uh, there is capacity in that, that, that plant. Uh, uh, we would like to do it. It would, would be a, a, an aid, certainly, in any other uh, work that is, is done downtown, any work that is done on the fire station, for example. It, it frees up uh, space that is currently being used for uh, leaching fields and we wouldn't have to worry about that. And, and, and it, it will save us from replacing septic systems as they, as they age and perhaps fail, uh, before they fail. So this is, this is important. Uh, if we could have squeezed another you know, 100 plus thousand dollars of the debt services would have been on the, the recommended list. But we, we couldn't, and it isn't. Um, going down just to look at the other items on the Excuse me, just, not Mr. recommended. Mr. Kelleher, just, just on that one there, yep. have we approached the state in relation to PBD Court also tying in? Because they may be willing to share in some of the costs. Um, their, their septic is actually over by the baseball field. It's across the street on yeah, the baseball. Yeah. Right? What's that? That's a fairly new septic. That was probably 15 years ago at the most. Right? Fif maybe 15 years, but what's it, a 25-year lifespan on the on the system? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be going right up the driveway. I think I think the, the uh, it was talked about. One of, one of the things, it, and it may be something in the future, mm -hmm. but th there will be a higher demand for wastewater from, from that property than other than the batch from any of the others we're looking at. Right. And we know there is capacity in the, the right. high school, middle school wastewater treatment plant for the properties that, that we described. Until it's been running for a while, we're not sure, or at least that was the, the word we got from, from, from DPW, that there would be enough capacity to take on the, the uh, elderly housing project as well. Um, and it gets a little complicated because it's state-owned versus, versus town-owned. And we'd have to have some sort of a, a, an arrangement with them. But you know, we talked about that would be a good way of, of helping to, to pay for it, but we don't want to overtax the system. And we, we'd rather bring in the pieces that, that we are proposing now. And down the road, if there is a there is additional capacity or is deemed to be additional capacity that could be could be uh, certainly brought up and discussed. Mike, do you want to we, we have four, I think there's all? I believe there's forty units there. That's it. There's forty yeah. units, mostly single people, elderly people, um, living there, and uh, you go right by the front door, and, yeah. and they're yeah. gonna they're gonna come knocking on our door probably in 15 years anyway, or 10 years from now, um, looking to tie in because otherwise they're going to have to replace that system. They've already done it, let's see, once. Oh, and they, they did it once and they've also repaired it. And so it's since 1960, it's been done twice. So that's 60 years. 
I, I think it would make sense to do it if we know that we can handle it at the... Well, you're, you're more familiar than I am as far as the capacity of that treatment plant is pretty good. Yeah, it is. It, 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 you know, what we're using for the schools is... Well, but there's one more school that we would be going into, the batch would be going no, into. No, I understand, well. right. So that, that's going to be part of, that will be the heaviest user of all of the ones we've talked about. Right. I mean, you're not going to get much out of the, the other buildings, really. Right. Um, yeah, but 40 think, units, yeah, 40 think, people, you know. But anyway. Do you have a comment on that one? Mr. Phil Ferdow. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you. Um, you know, it is something we talked about, and I know there was some um, concern with regard to DEP and their review process for this, but uh, we, we, we certainly want, I think, to partner with the Housing Authority. That was the, con the concept at the time we started talking about this in 2014, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I will ask the uh, Public Works Director and the Town Engineer to you know, reapproach DEP to see about that possibility and to also engage in conversation further uh, with uh, the operators of the plant, the public schools. And we should be able to figure out exactly what their current water usage is also. I would think, yeah. Good, pretty and easily. So I, I think, Madam Chair, through you, I think that this that that's an opportunity to defray cost or to cover additional cost if there is anything associated with it, but I don't think it necessarily impacts our ability to go forward with this project no, other when, than, when we go. No, other than it's a, well, if you go to October town meeting, legislative session ends in July. Mm -hmm. So if there's going to be money available, it's now, you know, but anyway, very good. Thank you. So I just to follow up on that, we have provided, you know, the project amongst a list of many projects to the, uh, the legislative delegation and to our uh, congressional delegation. And I know um, one of the senator's offices was interested in the project as a potential funding source. Um, so hopefully we may get something no I'm just saying uh, from from an appropriation standpoint a budgetary standpoint or even special legislation mm -hmm. to allow them to have them kick in not just as a grant but to be a user for that particular PB court so we can follow up on that uh, I think if, if, if we're going to do that we have to determine we already know that there's some increased cost with the maintenance that's absorbed by the school system and just to add our own town buildings onto that there is going to be some you know we're going to have to figure out the maintenance of that and the increased cost it will be to the town to cover that because obviously if we're sharing that facility with the school then we're going to share the obligation to um, address the increase increase to use so I think that would need to be determined first before we decide we're going to add on extra buildings and properties to it as well unless they're going to kick in to help they're going to kick in the whole oh, the whole or even a portion it. of it for maintaining it going forward yeah. too i mean they're going to be users also yeah, it would have to be of some some benefit to us to add even more buildings on that we'd be responsible for maintaining you know we would we'd have to really know the know what that potential maintenance cost is going to be because it's it's automatically going to increase with each different parcel being added to it so mm -hmm. we know the schools had increased costs associated with that as it currently operates and it was anticipated to operate so mr kelleher do you have anything else uh, Thank the, you. The rest, the rest of the list here in the the, the uh, in the not recommended. Um, there are items that have been on there for a while. The Central Street sidewalk is a, a big one, um, and that's that's one piece. That's about half of the sidewalk. The the other half is probably at least eight hundred thousand, maybe a million dollars. So that, that's that's a big item. Uh, the DPW would have liked a new bucket truck, you know, and uh, I think that will come back up again next year. Uh, I talked about the, the intersection uh, designs and construction rather, the design has been done. Um, and the others are, are relatively, except for the Route 28 design, the $800,000, the others are, are relatively small and I'm sure we'll be back up next year in, in all likelihood be, be recommended for inclusion next year. But 
we had to draw the line someplace. So when we looked at the, the, the cash, that was looking at the, the capital stabilization, uh, uh, stabilization fund, capital home stabilization fund, trying to maintain a balance in that of, of some reasonable amount of money. There's about 900, less than a million dollars in there now. Um, it gets replenished with, with free cash in the fall. We apply some of that to, to the, the projects. Um, we're trying to keep that at somewhere north of a half a million dollars, just as, as, a, as a buffer. And we're able to do it in this, this, uh, this, this program. The items that we're bonding, um, as I said, we're bonding a couple for, for 30 years and most for, for 10 years, and there's, I believe, a 15-year item in there as well. Um, and we've increased the, the cost of those bonds to 5%, uh, try to, trying to reflect what bond council has been telling us uh, this past year about where interest rates are going. Um, so, and that's about doubling the interest rate we were using last year and the year before. So, uh, we've kept the, the, the debt service at the prescribed limit. Uh, it was increased this year from a million one to a million two fifty, I believe. Next year, it is proposed to go to a million three, and then it goes to a million three fifty thereafter. And so, all of the modeling that we've done was with that as a as a, a, a parameter that we, we couldn't bust through the the allowable debt service that's being paid for in the operating budget. What we recommend doing is using the stabilization fund each year to the extent we need to buy down that that debt service and to hold it at that level. We're able to do that out through the projection period, which is 2030, that's as far as this, as this, this projection goes. It'll get updated again next year with the, the new items and uh, uh, rock forward out another year. But, but that's been our, uh, our mandate is to hold the debt service at the, the, uh, the limit that is being funded in the operating budget. And so we're able to do that with the projects that uh, we're recommending. Can I just have a question on, what's the Route yeah. 28 uh, project? Sorry? The, the Route 28 project, what is? Uh, well, that was, was the, for, if we wanted to do the design of the, the, the roadway and have, have to be able to control what was happening to, the, to the, the roadway when the state comes along to do whatever they're going to do to the road, the twenty-five, the, the eight hundred thousand dollars represents twenty-five percent of the design. So the whole thing would be three point two million dollars or thereabouts. Um, and this was the first piece of it. The alternative, as I understand it, is to let the state do the design and hope we can influence their design by telling them what we would like to see on, on how we would like to see the road design. The only way to have complete control over the design of the road, and for others who know more about this than I do, is for us to do the design ourselves with no reimbursement from the state for that design. I when we looked at this, we said, the likely, many of us thought, the likelihood of the state acting on Route 28 in the next year is probably pretty small. And that this wasn't an item that we thought needed to be dealt with this year. I think the bigger question is, can we influence the design that the state comes up with on the road without paying for it? And I, mean, I don't know the answer. Some, I think there, there is some certainly some, some significant sentiment that we can't but the state would just go and do what they want to do, and we would wish we had had more influence over it. Um, I, I hope that the state would pay a little bit more attention to the municipalities they're, they're putting, uh, rehabbing roads in to get some input from, from that municipality on, on what the thing ought to look like. But that's not something I've got any particular knowledge of. Okay, thank you. 
Any other questions, comments, Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, <clears throat> when I gave my suggestions on here, I just wanted to know that um, I gave fives to all of the intersections that we did the studies on. Personally, I feel like it's a safety issue, and I just hate to see them put off. Um, I know it got discussed when I wasn't in a meeting, and just personally for me, I feel that it should be, they should all be done this year. I just, I don't like putting off something that's such a big safety issue that we know bad accidents happen at, and I hate to see something happen before we get to that, something really bad. I just wanted to make that comment. Mr. Walner. I'm, I'm choking on one number, and that's that turf field, um, $486,000. Yeah. And, and I'm, you know, I, I'm not a football player, I'm not a lacrosse player, I'm not a soccer player or anything else like that, but I run around the field, and I don't see the wearing tear. It's in the center. center. It's in the center? It's not Wait, the can, you, can somebody explain to me what the justification is for that, compared to the other priorities that are up there? Again, this this, this truly is, is, is a safety issue. And we've been told by the people that come out to inspect the field, uh, to, uh, Parks and Rec has been told, we haven't been told, but Parks and Rec have been told that there is wear on it, there is there are some spots in the middle of it that are could be could be dangerous or will be at some point in time. Uh, the it has The field that, that that turf cover is, I guess, more than 10 years old now. And it has kind of reached its useful life. And we're trying to look to be responsive to Parks and Rec in that they brought this up last year to, to do. And we kind of said, go back and take a, take a real hard look at it. Um, I think there's a liability issue that if it if we're told that it is got to a, a, a dangerous point or it could be approaching a dangerous point, that we really should do something about it. <coughs> there's a lot of lot of lot of people on that field, not just kids, but a lot of people on that field. And if it, you know, I, I think that we behoove the town to, to make sure that it is, as you would say, with the intersections, that we take care of safety first. Would I like to spend a half a million dollars on the turf field? Absolutely not. Yeah. But um, it's something we have to do. It's not. It's not. Uh, not. It's not just adding some some nice. Uh, no, I understand it. I, I just need to hear. <laughs> yeah. It's just disappointing that a turf field only lasts ten years, and it's like basically a fifty thousand dollar year lease to, to to. Well, the covering the covering is what we're talking about. And then some of some of the the uh, materials underneath it will need, need some some rework, but uh, the carpet itself has got that kind of a life. What we're proposing here is 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 bonding. Uh, no, we're not bonding it. I take it back. We're, take we're going to bond it. We're going to hold it to a ten-year bond. Yeah. I think that we talked about. Um, going forward, knowing that this is going to have to be done again, eventually, you know, preparing for that in the future, which we didn't do. I'm sorry, I missed that initial point. Going forward, because it's going to, it's going to have to be done again. It has to be kept up. Yeah. So you going forward, say, hopefully preparing for that. You break some of the each year towards the yeah. end of the building. I also think that there have been some repairs mm -hmm. done over the last year or so, so that we can Extend the replacement, um, uh, and we also looked at other ways to pay for it. There was some state, there is some state money for that. Yeah, nearly enough, needless to say, because it doesn't cover the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, but and, 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 and in fairness to Parks and Rec, it's not just Parks and Rec. I mean, it is a school property. It is used primarily by the schools, not not by Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Kind of has some some use of it, but to look to Parks and Rec to pay for it, Not uh, I don't think that would be a, a reasonable thing to do. I mean, 
pri the primary user of, of that field is, is the school system. I mean, I just like, to, I, I don't know who's saying that there's a liability. I understand that it has to be rehab for concussion purposes, but that's no different than any other field in the town. But just to, to say, you know, we're going to be liable if someone gets a concussion. I mean, you can get a concussion anywhere. You can get injured <coughs> anywhere when you're playing sports or using a recreational field. I feel like that that maybe there's other options that we should look into. We, we have we laid out a turf field, so now we're stuck with the maintenance of a turf field and all the undergirding of that turf field, which is why this is such a cost costly endeavor to keep up. And I agree with you. Ten years seems hardly worth it. Let's plant some grass seed and make sure we yeah. take care of grass yeah. instead of having to. And it's the same risk of concussion on the street, the sidewalk, the, the grass field, the turf field. It's supposed to be a better system. I understand that. And it's a beautiful, beautiful park. But it's, it's, really, it's really expensive. It, it's, I, I wanted to ask you about these tea boxes. What's a tea box and why are they under it? I'm, I can't get over those things. A cart path, isn't that just a dirt path that you drive the no. cart along? What, what, don't they already have cart paths here? Or the tea boxes, I don't understand. What, is that a box that you put the little? No. It, what it, is it? I mean, that, I'm, have, I'm trying to absorb those, those budget sure, items. Well, well, wants to talk about this. Because I think some of that, yeah. some of that funding maybe could have generated to pay for, you know, for some of the funding at, at the, in that enterprise. And I know we've discussed this at our strategic plan, but some of that could have maybe paid for some traffic calming or improvements on North Street, right down the road. But what is a tee box? Tee box is where you 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 drive the ball from. So having. It's a golf course. There's, there's got to be golf yeah, course. Yeah, the golf course. If you if you don't have a golf course that's got got good usable facilities, okay. you're not going to bring the revenue. Yes. The people aren't going to play golf. I understand. The tee box is where you get up and you you. you that's where you set your tee in the ground in the grass, put your ball on it, and you tee off. Okay. Yeah. How about the bunkers? What's a bunker? Bunkers are the 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 uh, sand traps. Sand traps. Sand traps. I mean, that seems so expensive for a tee box. And that isn't even an artificial turf. There are That's just there are grass. So. You have 18 holes. There are 18 holes. <laughs> you know, that might, that might do three, two. Three. Uh, yes, all right. But, but I agree with what Mrs. Gonzalez said. To arguably, every single one of these is a safety thing. But we do know from paying for studies that we really wanted to effectuate those traffic calming measures. Yeah and address those situations. I rank those very high as well. Um, and that's because we, we have the study now and we need to move forward with it. And I agree also with what you said, Mr. Kelleher, because you, this is so well laid out with which departments are, and a lot, but a lot of the, the DPW ones are really, you know, a variety. But that school department is also, really should be the one for the turf field because they're, they are the primary user of that turf field, too. But they but don't own it. The Hillview you owns it, right? We keep hearing this. So. Under the care, custody, and control of the recreation. <laughs> but the school uses it. Most. Right. Absolutely. They have first priority. Right. Which, it should, which is as it as should be. And I also understand, as we discussed at length, that strategic planning that from the Hillview Enterprise put up the funds to I guess rehab that in the first place. So now we have to maintain it. So that is a, a big, big chunk of change that could have gone to a whole host yeah. of other yeah. safety measures. Sure. But and, and again, I'll assume some responsibility because I've been sitting here a while. We should have been planning for this over the exactly. last 10 to 15 years. And we didn't. So. And that's so what I'm saying. If better going forward, we should be. Better policies in place to be able to cover that somehow. Yep. Instead of it being a massive hit like that. Although, you know, maybe we're going to have to absorb. Well, even it's more. a major facility that the town utilizes yes. and to a certain degree raises revenue from. Right. You know, but primarily it's, it's, it's school use and, and town use. So 
um, you know, we should plan like any other investment, any other piece of property we have. We're going to have to invest. We know we're going to have to invest in this every 10 to 15 Correct. years, and we should just plan on it. Right. Maybe that revenue goes right in. Well, no, the revenue, again, is generated through parks and recreation, but again, they have other programs which are certainly uh, don't raise the revenue to support the programming and the programming. Again, we're already supplementing the recreation department, too, because it's not self-sustaining. Um, it does not seem like a whole heck of a lot of money all told for things, but I know that the expenditure is, we're cautious about that. We're cautious about the way that we're spending funds. So I appreciate the way this is laid out to see how many other, you know, yeah. sources that that you're getting, you utilizing for the payment of a lot of these things. Does anybody else have any questions or comment or I just I, I would like to also say that I mean the way you put this out is very user friendly to read and understand. Yeah. So for sure. For sure. Do we have a motion to oh. We have to approve it, yes. Do we have a motion? We do. <laughs> Mr. Ma Walner. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting the FY 2023 capital expenditures as recommended by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you for the usual. Again, in your committee, yeah, for the painstaking, so for the right painstaking process that you go through. My name is spelled wrong, probably a third of the time. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm not alone. It's E instead of I. It's all fixed. E. One L instead of two. All right. Our next order of business is to review and discuss the town administrator's fiscal year twenty. 2023 departmental budget recommendations. They get revenue and expense plan. I already checked that off. Yes. They already checked You're that right. off. I'm, okay. I'm moving right along. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is our next order of business. business. I was trying to get to that 815 meeting, that, that, that public hearing that was put I'm sorry. And Ms. Brock, review the updated fiscal year 2023 revenue and expense plan. Jump ahead. <coughs> Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, many, you know, the uh, chair and former vice chair, um, you know, reviewed this revenue plan at our last uh, financial planning meeting. I want to say was April. Two weeks ago. Yeah, weeks. probably two weeks ago, um, and. I'll just go quickly through it to review some of the, the changes that have come about, very minor. Um, so on this front page, which is the taxes and state age um, section of the revenue plan, you will see that Chapter 70, as well as um, charter school reimbursements and library um, offset receipts, those have been updated figures according to the house budget. And um, there is also an offset uh, in the expenses um, for the public library's offset receipts. So we'll see that in a few, a few slides down. Under local receipts, since the last time we reviewed the revenue plan, there have been no changes. Um, so those uh, stay as, as they are. And now we move forward with the expense uh, section of the revenue plan. And highlighted in yellow under the FY23 uh, projected budget, you can see the <coughs> state and county charges um, decrease to $166,018. And as I mentioned, the cherry sheet offsets. Um, one is listed in revenue under state aid and one comes off as basically uh, a charge. 
<clears throat> no other changes have been made to this. I will just note that um, the PFA health insurance contingency as well as the school health insurance and municipal health insurance budget numbers uh, reflect the 7.5% uh, increase as discussed at um, the previous select board meeting. Moving on down to the budget distribution section. Um, <clears throat> so uh, in a few slides, um, when we get to the budget hearing, um, you will see a pie chart of, of the breakdown between fixed costs, municipal costs, and then school department costs um, with the percentage allocations. Um, so total municipal allocation is about 33.11% and total uh, school allocation of revenue is 66.89%. Uh, um, but you will see that uh, later on in the, the presentation. Um, one other item I will note uh, that has been adjusted since our financial planning meeting and it was discussed at financial pl planning is uh, with the trash program, as we all know, we've been talking about trash for quite a few months. We have our trash fee, and then we have the new program is of pay-as-you-throw uh, trash, where you will go and purchase rolls of trash bags for your trash overflow. And so we are only project projecting $5,000 for FY23, uh, and the reason for that is, you know, um, the bags are going to take three months um, to be produced, and so we're, we need to really see how um, at least nine months plays out for, for the first year. Um, so we did have $40,000 in there at the last uh, financial planning team meeting, um, but we've since uh, adjusted that, uh, especially after finding out that produ production of the trash bags will take about three months. Um, so moving down to total municipal revenue available, you can see um, there's $18,790,779. And um, the total municipal operating budget is, did I say 17 million? I'm sorry, 18 million, 790. Um, and the total municipal operating budget is 19,138,291. Total municipal revenue available, and <coughs> then we have an added funding source of free cash, um, which is 347,512, uh, and in that number is 295,312 for four um, firefighter recruit training costs and also 52,200 for DPW small capital that you saw in the Saturday budget presentation by DPW in various divisions. Um, so that gives us total revenue of 19,138,291 and total municipal operating budget is 19,138,291. Down to the school <coughs> allocation, um, you can see that total school revenue available is $35,474,330. Um, they have a total operating budget of $35,709,330, and they have an additional funding source of one-time items to be funded with free cash of $235,000. And I failed to mention when I discussed the municipal free cash um, allocation, those are one-time items. So that is what I have on the revenue plan. Questions? Any questions, Mr. O'Leary? Just on the um, PFA health insurance contingency, mm -hmm. um, the, you're carrying 7.5%, which is what we've been carrying for a while. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that represents what? About 75,000 bucks? $75,000 more than? It's 7.5% of what? So the PFA contingency? Yeah. So it's PFA, what we have to pay for um, the PFA. 
um, which is broken out on a sheet, and I can pull that up um, as well. But it's also a contingency for um, any uh, changes if there's, a, you know, we factor in new hires within the municipal and the school allocations of health insurance. But this is for if, um, it, you know, uh, someone gets married, a, li a life changing event. So if someone gets married, they come on the health insurance. You know, we already had the employee, but now we have an addition to the family plan. Um, so it gives us a little buffer. Um, but I'll let the town administrator speak to the, the PFA dollar amount. Is the question relative to the breakdown, Mr. O'Leary, or so? So we have in here a million fifty-five. Is is that that's what you're setting aside? No. No. That that so that's, that's only the portion of the health insurance cost related to the PFA. That is that's the, what the net PFA contingency is going to end up at with the seven and a half percent? Well, it went, it went from you know nine eighty one to one million fifty five, so it's seventy some odd thousand dollars increase. Mm -hmm. Okay, based upon the premium that so we're covering, or you just went up by seven and a half percent. So, so Mr. Conferno. thank you, Madam Chair. Through you, so there there are three components of health insurance that are now in the expenditure plan, as you see there. One is the PFA. One is municipal health insurance, and then the final is school health insurance. Right. And rather than apply varying percentages, according to, for example, the premium we saw from Blue Cross, which was a different premium than what we actually are going to experience, right. we've applied the 7.5% across the board in the three categories. And so that PFA number, Mr. O'Leary, um, we, we have to pay RSI, who is um, right, our advisor. And, yeah. Yep, and so that's what they project for. You know, it's basically that we have to pay them for the claims that they pay out. So this is not our surplus that we plan right. on receiving. Yep. This is for the claims that they plan on paying out. And you've increased that number by seven and a half percent over last year. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to. Yes, correct. And then you're projecting moving forward at eight and a half, correct? Moving forward, eight point five. Yes. Okay. So for FY twenty four, we have a projection number which you you don't see here. We have a projection number of one million one forty four eight fifty two. Actually, I see it here in our packet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So for the presentation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Eight and a half for future years. So last year's number also had a contingency in it as well. So we take the number provided by RSI for um, the projected claims, and um, they've already inflated that by you know the seven and a half percent or six and a half percent or five, whatever it turns out to be. And then we. Um, have added contingency ourselves so that rolls forward you know each year so the 981 547 from fy 22 just rolled forward at seven and a half percent yeah. okay so, so you're working off the previous <coughs> budget number in the correct. pfa line seven yep. and a half percent mm -hmm. next should be eight and a half percent mm -hmm. okay yes correct All right. and, but if their fee changes that'll change right. whatever uh, yes yes uh for because this is this is anticipated claims plus Fee. Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so, for 23, this is their the projected figure that you know um, it it's going to cover their fees, the claims that they pay out, and um, a little buffer that we have in there. So, and then going forward, if uh, their fee increases for 24, that number will be adjusted um, as well as the eight and a half percent. Plus the bottom. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We we were always carrying it at seven and a half percent though. For FY twenty three. Before yeah. that though. For no. future years. No. no. Previous oh, years. Previous years. Yes. 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 We always had plugged that amount yep. in, except for maybe one uh, one or two of the very very early. They were lower. Yes. Years where we did four and five. I yes. Think. So, but we increase that to seven and a half, but we know that's not, 
that isn't that it's going to be adequate. That's right? not going to be good practice no. because it's not going to cover right. what we even know the basic increases that we see in the premium every year. Right. So we have to work on a plan to absorb that in the in what we have and make sure we keep continue to make it more realistic to what we're seeing yes. on average for, for the premium increase. I but I think, think the first step was a little eight eight and a half. Right. And I think we need to move that. forward, you know, and, and incrementally um, figure out a game plan for that of um, yes. how we should increase it. So um, you know that probably is a topic that we should discuss uh, you know, with financial planning as soon as soon as possible. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Okay, the next order of business, oh. you're here for the next thing, right? Let's, oh, I'm not finished with it. Oh, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry, I thought it was. <laughs> Everything is all in one. Um, so we have, we have the revenue plan, we have the departmental, yes. um, budget request summary and then we have the budget hearing so we'll just <laughs> keep on going so just before we get to the budget hearing now i have to read the sure. old the, the meeting yes yep is this okay yep okay okay so um as we just Good. saw uh 35 million seven oh nine three hundred and thirty dollars is available for school department operations the school committee approved the, op the school department's operating budget on May 2nd. Um, and as mentioned previously, 235000 was identified in one-time uh, expenses and will be funded with free cash, which still in, um, makes the school department's FY23 operating budget $35,709,330. Available funds for municipal department Operations, um, nineteen million one hundred thirty-eight thousand two hundred ninety-one dollars. Total municipal department budget requests, nineteen million two hundred ninety thousand and thirty-two dollars. Um, and as you saw on the previous slide, three hundred forty-seven thousand five hundred twelve dollars is uh, one-time uh, costs um, to be funded with free cash. Now you see here a budget gap of 151,741, and you're probably all saying, hmm, well she just told us on the previous slide that the budget was balanced and there was no, no gap. So you will see on a, a further slide um, what comprises of, of that because the departmental budget requests were $19,290,032, um, but the town administrators recommended departmental uh, budgets is nineteen million one thirty eight two ninety one. So we will we will identify the one fifty one seven forty one. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. Moving on to the departmental budget recommendations. Uh, do you want to do this or do no, you? Okay. You're doing great. <laughs> no, I, I, I. You're on a roll. <laughs> I don't want to take it going. I don't want to take you know the thunder. Uh, okay, so FY23 departmental budget request uh, recommendations. So um, we have within the FY22 budget um, the creation or the adoption, which is in our charter, the public service director position. Um, and in FY22, that's not budgeted as a full 100,000 because um, the position did not, uh, you know, begin in July of FY22. We are still in the process of uh, interviewing um, for the public service director position. That should be wrapped up this week. Uh, we are deferring the new library and new services uh, positions. The library position um, is a programmer outreach, outreach position and then the assistant youth services part-time um, position. Until the public service director position is filled, those two positions will be held in the salary pool for FY23. They total 78,000. 
The youth services uh, part-time assistant position is 25,000, and the library position is 53,000. We um, had a modified FY23 library budget request of $7,000 to fund tuition reimbursement for a library technician. It is part of their um, CBA um, agreement that uh, they can receive uh, tuition reimbursement. Um, and so this, this will be uh, funded under a departmental budget request. We are going to reclassify the project manager uh, grant writer position that uh, was going to be housed in the, under the town administrator's budget and was funded for FY22 at $75,000. That position will now be moved to um, the uh, finance division as a grant writer position. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. So just kind of to give you some of the, the background, it, a lot of what you see in bullets in bullet two is tied to the process that we're in for bullet one. You know, we're still going through that process of identifying the candidate for the public service director position. You know, I'm optimistic that we will wrap that process up over the course of the next week or so. And from there, uh, we'll take that person's feedback with regard to the proposals for new positions within two of the departments that will fall under the public services division and look to, uh, to their, for their voice for, with regard to how we fill those positions, whether we fill them in the same form, whether we fill them in a different form. Um, but we're, we're recommending we reserve the funding for those in the salary pool so that we have that option available to us. Um, over the course of the beginning of this upcoming fiscal year. Um, the tuition reimbursement request um, came in from the, uh, the library with regard to library personnel. Um, as the uh, finance director mentioned, uh, there, th this is a benefit that's provided for under the collective bargaining agreement, but it is subject to appropriation, which means that it's only provided if the town appropriates the funding. And there is a, a so-called clawback provision uh, in place with regard to that as well in the event <coughs> the employee leaves. Uh, the service of the town and the final thing is you know we've had a lot of conversation with regard to the very important position of the grant writer um, we've advertised for the position did not get an overwhelming uh, response in terms of the, the candidates coming in spoken with the finance director and our feeling is that uh, we still proceed with the position as purely a grant writer position to go after those funds um, and that we uh, we locate it within the finance director's office uh, for uh, not only for oversight but also because of the reporting that goes in hand in hand with what the finance department does Thank you. Madam Chair. Sure. Oh, Mr. My initial reaction, just in relation to the grant position, uh, grant, grant writer position, and it's going to be in its infancy stages, I would, and again, I, would, I know he's ultimately responsible for it, but I would still prefer to have it in the town administrator's office. And again, you can assign anybody you want to. Have them report to them, but <coughs> to me, this is going to be a new position. We're expecting a lot out of the individual, and um, I, I, mean, I, get, I just think this should it almost should be a direct report. But um, because I mean, the other one is going to be ultimately held responsible for what's happening, what's not happening, or if something's happening, and and all the rest. As of now, and, and again, as it evolves, then maybe you transfer it, but. Uh, as you, if you recall, we were talking about potentially an assistant town administrator's position, and we said, you know, this is probably more appropriate. Uh, right now. For, yeah, right now. So I, to me, it's just, uh, I, I want the ownership to be where I'm going to hold the person responsible uh, for it. Not the finance director, town administrator, personally. <coughs> Either way, I'm going to hold you responsible for it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. but to me, I think it's we need, we need this position filled. <coughs> we need it filled, like, and, uh, and I three think three years ago, right? Three a while ago. Right. Mr. O'Leary, you all set? Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez. Just my comment. Yeah. I thought that we had discussed that the, the new position would, that would be a requirement that they be a grant writer. Did I misunderstand that? I, I don't I don't 
think so, but I don't, I don't know what the reclassify means, so that was going to be my question, because project manager is, a, is, a, is an entirely different title than grant writer, so is that what, is that what you mean? You, we, I, I, we were talking about a grant writer. Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I thought in maybe in strategic planning when we were talking about the public service director position that that would incorporate the grant writing as part of that position. Those are two separate. They are. Two they separate. are two separate. separate. Two separate. Two separate. Right. Yeah, because we talked about a, clearly a public service director working with all the human services divisions, which most of which municipalities are funded under grants, senior you know, senior centers and, right. you know, veterans and things like that. So that individual would obviously have to have some, you know, grant, grant, right, right, grant right. writing capability. Yeah. But this is a standalone right. position. So I don't know, is it, was there something with the way that it was advertised as a project manager, Mr. Gilberto, that that's why it didn't draw in? Because that's something totally, I think it gives off a separate message altogether that a grant writer, but if you don't mind explaining that to I them. don't mind at all. Madam Chair, it was advertised as a combined project manager grant position. That's how it was proposed in the budget initially three years ago and then cut and then reproposed to get proposed again for the current fiscal year. The bottom line is you're right. The feedback we got back from the finance committee as well was it's just very different skill sets that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So the proposal is to go forward purely as a grant writer position and to advertise in that fashion, I think we'll get a much better response. You should almost say, even though this is not, you probably can't do this financially, but you get your, your you know, a percentage of whatever grants you bring in. <laughs> Commission <laughs> based. That's what they do in the private oh, yeah. sector, mm -hmm. but, you know, I know that we could, maybe you could tie a bonus to mm. the revenue, you know, grant revenue generated, but. <laughs> Just a thought. We can look at that, we're Madam giving, Chair. Thank you. We're giving Ms. Rourke, you know, a ner nervous breakdown. <laughs> it's probably inappropriate under municipal finance law, but anyway, something, something creative to get mm -hmm. some in other incentive in there. Although I do think North Reading is an amazing place to work with amazing benefits offered. So we'll just add that little plug in there. All right. Is there any? Are there any other questions about this? And are we done with the recommendations, or do you have another slide? Any other questions? No. All right. Okay. okay. Um, as many of us uh, heard during the Saturday budget hearing for um, the fire department, um, chief stats discussed the day officer position. Um, this position has been brought forward for a few years. First, I believe it was, you know, titled Fire Prevention Officer, Day Officer, you know. So, um, this position with uh, potential changes to staffing, uh, the staffing model in the, the near future, um, we are going to hold this uh, position in the salary pool similar to the youth services part-time assistant director and the library pro uh, program manager outreach, you know, coordinator. Um, so this is, you know, we're not saying no to this. It's just we're going to hold it in the salary pool. Although we haven't said yes to it either, right? No, right. Uh, I yeah. mean, so, but this is this yep, is uh, the departmental budget yep. recommendation. <coughs> uh, the next item that's that your deficit right there. That's your hundred and fifty one thousand dollar deficit. Go ahead, Ms. Roar. The okay. next item is uh, to fund the requested part time per diem building inspector inspection bill services position of twenty thousand dollars. This position um, existed uh, not on a per diem basis, but it was a part time position. Um, and we did have this position even uh, when we hired our uh, full-time assistant uh, building inspector. So we are now uh, reinstating this position. Uh, we received a um, departmental budget um, request from the Board of Health 
uh, for a full-time Title V inspection services position at $60,000. Uh, this was a secondary uh, budget request from the Board of Health. The first budget request from the Board of Health was requesting contracted services for Title V inspection services at an amount of $17,300. Uh, we have had further discussion and 25000 is what we are proposing in addition for contractual services. We also had a departmental budget request from the Human Resources Department to increase um, the benefits uh, coordinator position from 30 hours to 35 hours. That position had been at 35 hours several years back. It dropped down to 30. We're asking to increase it, or the Human Resources Department is asking to increase it five more hours a week for a total of 10,468. We are deferring uh, the funding for two tree positions within the Department of Public Works until, uh, uh, until it comes back around in FY24 and that is a total of $109,041. And um, so, as mentioned, um, we are funding with free cash training for four fire department recruits at 295312 and uh, DPW small capital at 52200 Just want to bring us back up to defer funding for the two tree positions that have been requested by the Department of Public Works for 109,000. Uh, and also, I want to bring us back to uh, modify the Board of Health's um, request. So the difference with the Board of Health's uh, request and the two tree positions brings us back to the total budget gap of 151,741. So the town administrator's departmental uh, budget recommendations uh, total 19 million 138 thousand uh, 291 dollars. Is that by not approving the sixty thousand dollar tree? No. The, the board of health um, position for sixty thousand this year, and then the other two, two tree positions. positions. Yes. Yep. So we have a balanced budget with the town administrator's departmental budget request. Okay, questions? I know that's great. I can't imagine there's any questions with the ending with we have a balanced budget, but okay. Oh, we got one. Questions? <laughs> okay, Mrs. Hey, Earl. Question. Yes, Mrs. Earl. Um, to you, the town administrator, uh, is the training for fire department recruits normally paid for with free cash? Madam Chair, through you. Oh, Mr. Gumpert. Um, I think it was to me. Did I hear you right? So, it, it, depending upon the year, Madam, uh, Madam Chair, through you to Ms. Robert, um, we have a potentially unique situation upcoming with four potential retirements happening at the same point in time. And the finance director and I to discuss this and recognizing the unique situation that that presents, felt that this was an appropriate use of free cash. Um, further bolstered by the, pa the fact that, as I think some of you saw in your emails, we had a very healthy free cash certification coming from the Department of Revenue on Thursday of last week at over $5 million. Um, so I think we felt that at this stage of the budget process, based on the, the unique number of positions that coming up at the same time, it was the right, the right move. Any other questions? Yeah, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Mr. Yeah, same line. Question here, Mr. Sarabat. Uh, I don't. I don't recall funding salaries with free cash. First of all, um, backing up the back up a couple of slides, one or two slides here. So this is that one. Maybe it's the next one. What was the hundred and six? Maybe it's the next slide up. Nope, down. I'm sorry, the other way. Down. Oh, so that. Deferring $164,000 to the salary pool, which, which, which what the request was, so you're still allocating the money, the $164,000, you're just putting it in the salary pool. 
and that's to cover again what? But just to have it. It's to cover the fire department's day officer requested position within their departmental budget request presented to us in, in March. And I will um, defer to the town administrator to explain the, the thought process with this. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. We know that we have seen this request over the past couple of years and have not um, not been prepared to proceed with it. I think what's given me, even though we may have the financial capability to potentially fund it, we also have a recently settled collective bargaining agreement that has within it potential avenues to modify staffing in the department. And I think that anything we do with this one position needs to be done in the context of the rest of those staffing discussions. And I clearly have not had those discussions at this point in time. No, it, it, my thought process too, in, in that this did not, I do not necessarily see this fitting into the equation in the upcoming fiscal year necessarily. So, so I mean, so if that's the case, you know, you're funding two hundred ninety-five thousand dollars or whatever it is for free cash. Um, I, I guess I don't see the the merits of of uh, allocating one hundred sixty-four, one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars into a salary pool when you're also supplementing the salary pool with two hundred ninety-five thousand dollars and uh, just tying it into some of these other requests. Obviously, I've been spending a considerable amount of time uh, conferring with the, with the Board of Health and um, their requests, and it doesn't appear as though their workload is necessarily going to be diminishing over the next several months either and into the next fiscal year. I mean, the, the pandemic is like, well, it's fluctuating a bit. It's not going away, and, you know, we're going to have to be able to react to whatever's going to occur. And they're, they're talking about another surge in the fall, in the winter, and uh, you know, we're going to have to be running clinics again. We're going to have to be um, diverting the attention of, the, of our health director on that and away from other, other responsibilities and duties that would normally, under normal circumstances, he would have been able to absorb. So I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm questioning a bit. Um, <coughs> Why couldn't you fund a sixty thousand dollar position? You know, take the additional funds there, put less in the salary pool, and and meet the needs, uh, identifiable needs that we have already responsibility for. Same with the board of health. Um, I think we can meet the requested needs, and again, the board of health over the years has been pretty conservative in their in their uh, budget requests and. Uh, what they've been looking for over the years have been operating pretty efficiently. And the regular normal responsibilities, whether it be inspections for you know, Title V or whether it be inspection of restaurants, and all, that hasn't diminished. If that hasn't gone away. But the responsibilities of this agency or this dep department have taken on exponential responsibilities. And again, I don't see it going away for the next year. Again, we can modify this next year, you know, for the 2024 budget. But for 2023, their needs are considerable. And socking away $164,000 for a position that we're probably not going to fill in a salary pool and not meeting those identifiable needs, I think, is maybe not right. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? I, I don't recall, excuse me, but as far as the uh, the building department, that, that's what they requested, the 20000 I believe yeah. so. Is that okay. right? That's fine. But I, I just don't see the responsibilities and the, the workload of the, of the health uh, department diminishing at all. And the, and the need is there. And again, it doesn't have to be you know, forever and a day. It's let's address the needs as they're presented to us. and fund it and then and we've done it in the past. We've hired consultants and we've had other personnel on and we've then reduced the, reduced the uh, personnel and when the workload diminished. 
we've done the same thing in the, in the building department. Uh, they, they are they are funding the need by giving the twenty five thousand in contractual services. They're, they're they're, they're, they're we, don't need a, a, we don't need a full time Title V inspector in the department. We don't. No, and they they don't even. We can't we can't meet the requests on a timely basis for people to transact their real estate transactions. It's been a constant criticism, you know, and the people that we have right now, their attention is being diverted to other things like a pandemic. Everybody's attention has been to a I, I, I understand, the but we're here. talking about the Board of Health here. If they have specific responsibilities for, you know, that's right. restaurants and Title V and all the that's rest. That's right. And that's under normal circumstances. But I, I, I don't, I think we would need to see the data to suggest but, but that a full-time position is Let's get back to the $164,000 that's been allocated for a salary pool for a position that we're probably not going to fill this year. And yet we're not, we can't see our way clear to meet something that's right in front of us, or needs that are right in front of us. I don't get it. I don't know that there's that, that a need for a full time another full time position in that department for that service. So we're going to set aside one hundred sixty four thousand dollars for a full time position that we're not going to fund that we're not that we're going to fund but we're not going to fill. I'm, I'm not I'm not necessarily negating your argument on that strategy, but I don't think that it should go to the board of health for a Title Five inspector or any other place that was. But um, but Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it, I mean, you're saying that there's going to be another surge and we're going to need more clinics. I, I don't see Did that. It's going to be like it was. Maybe some boosters. It's not going to be like it was when everybody had to get vaccinated. Everybody's vaccinated. They might need a booster. I don't see that it's going to be the same scenario. It, it's it not going to be the same when nobody was vaccinated. Right. I'll grant you that. But the boosters wear off. The things we're and you're going to have the same people that were already got the shot need it again but again and I think the state has learned a lot and I think a lot more is going to be pushed down to the local level because it could be handled there more easily now than it was before and I think they have more confidence in the in the more local or regional settings rather than sending people to Gillette Stadium but well, the argument would have been better made if that was some sort of a COVID-19 Position or pandemic position, but no, you had the health director that's handling that. He's the one that's certified. He's the one that has the the credentials. This is specific to meet the needs that are ongoing all the time, 52 weeks out of the year. Okay, but prior to COVID, the health director already right. contracted out for for that work. So or the previous one contract. Or the other the other one that, that the, the previous more the previous unbearable. health director had contracted out for the restaurant inspectional services because his specialty was Title V. So well, that's what the 25000 in additional contracted mm -hmm. services is for. Oh, again, I, I, I don't understand the merits of the $164,000 going into a salary pool as presented. Um, I, I and, totally and I don't agree, and I don't agree with, with, with funding salaries out of free cash, and I don't believe we're, we're appropriately addressing needs that are right in front of us. Other okay. than that, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All set. Just, Mr. Wall. Just a quick question. I'm still kind of stuck on the training for Ford Fire Department recruits is 295000 What is What is that? I, I mean, literally, we're spending $80,000 per person to train them? Yes, to pay the salary instead of the academy. Thanks, Rob. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, so it's it, it's a combination. Uh, we have to backfill for those those positions. We have potential for retirements within the fire department, so there would be um, backfilling so that these individuals could you know train, and we would be having to fill with with overtime. Um, and it's also outfitting um, the new the new recruits. Um, 
I also want to just note that uh, we did fund uh, recruit training within the fire department uh, or within the salary pool last year uh, with free cash. As it is not, you know, typically a reoccurring uh, cost to the town. Thank you. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair. So just with regard to the deferring of the fire department day officer position, I'm not certain that the right move is to fill that position in the fire department. But what I, I did see here in my conversations with the finance director and the, the fire chief, there's a, this is funding that could also address some of the staffing discussions that we've had and uh, things that tie back to the collective borrowing agreement for which we really have not had ample time to <coughs> prepare for and implement based upon the timeline. So my hope is that it gives us an opportunity to consider those options and reserves that funding for that purpose. Doesn't obligate us to do anything in, in that particular department at this point in time, but it does gives us, give us the opportunity to evaluate what makes the most sense based on the recent collective borrowing agreement. So that was my feeling on that. With regard to the other item of the Board of Health, uh, I believe the Board of Health's initial submission to us called for a request for $17,000 in con contracted services. After, I think it was a Board of Health meeting in November where this became a pretty contentious discussion, I had asked them, you know, give me the, what the request would be if we were a standalone full-time person. They then followed up with that request. Um, I'm not recommending going forward with that standalone full-time person, but I am recommending giving more in contracted services than was originally requested to make sure we can cover cover that need for the upcoming fiscal year. Questions? All set? Okay. Okay. Was that all, Ms. Roy? Yes, now we're at the public. Okay. Let me just, we'll <coughs> move on to the next order of business, which is the, um, Unless there's anything else, Mr. Gilberto? Is there a motion? Ma Madam Chair, through you, we did provide the clerk a, a motion that would, would finalize the budget with the fixed cost oh. school committee, um, municipal, and what am I missing? Um, well, shouldn't we do that after the informational here? We, we don't traditionally, but we certainly could. All right. We'll do it <laughs> your way. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Walner. Madam Chair, I move to recommend What's the fiscal year 2023 operating budget in the following amounts as proposed by the town administrator. Municipal fiscal year 23 budget, $19,138,291. Schools FY 23 budget, $35,709,330. Fiscal year 23 fixed cost, $23,209,712.57. And for a total budget of $78,057,333.57. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any <coughs> further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. I will be supporting the motion. I may not agree with all the allocations, but I believe that the process works. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Also, to thank the school department because through these uh, financial planning team meetings, they really did uh, go back and scrub the budget for cuts that they could make or consideration of one-time funds. And as we went through, um, as Ms. Gonzalez and I attended those, we, you know, we learned that a lot of their attention had been diverted due to extraneous issues that were occurring, not the least of which were multiple repetitive public records requests that was taking their time and attention off of these really important things like budget, not the public records aren't important, but the budget and getting this <coughs> ready on, on a timely basis was important too. So. So we do want to thank them for the school, the school department, the school committee, Michael Connolly, and Dr. Daly, and uh, just going back and really looking at looking at this and fine tuning it so that we could come into balance with both the municipal and the school department <coughs> budgets. All right. So next order of business is the actual hearing, town of North Reading. Notice of fiscal year 2023 budget informational hearing. 
North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that an in-person and virtual informational hearing on the fiscal year 2023 budget for the town of North Reading anticipated to be considered at the spring annual town meeting on Monday, June 6, 2022, will be held on Monday, May 9, 2022, 8.15 p.m., room 14, Town Hall, 235 North Street, and via Zoom technology, and the hearing notification and publication notices the access information to join the Zoom meeting with the meeting ID, the one tab mobile numbers, and the dial by your location. So we'll open the budget <coughs> informational hearing. Mi Mr. Gilberto, any comment, or Ms. Rourke, any comment? Ma Madam Chair, we have a brief presentation we can go through for the benefit of the public. It will re. Please. It will review most of what we've already discussed, but. I will, I will go Please do. Just to, um, you know, echo uh, your sentiments, Madam Chair, um, you know, the town administrator and myself, um, you know, we continue our budget collaboration between uh, the town or municipal and school leaders through the financial planning <coughs> which consists of um, the superintendent of schools, um, the assistant superintendent of um, business operations, the chair and vice chair of the select board, the chair and vice chair of the science committee, and the chair and vice chair of the school committee. So we, um, I know that um, since I started 10 and a half years ago, um, I started my first day with a financial planning team meeting and it is a useful tool for all of us because it brings us all together, gets us all on the same page and you know there's we all work together to make sure that the needs of both the municipal uh, side and the school side you know somehow we can uh, fill those budget gaps um, and shortfalls that we see early on and um, work together with, with coming in with balanced budgets. <clears throat> we continue to maintain and um, hope to continue to maintain an affordable health plan. You know, as we discussed um, going forward, we need to come up with, um, you know, maybe even a policy of how we, we budget for it in, in future fiscal years, but we have taken a step for that um, for the next few few years out, so we will continue to work on that. Um, you know, and as mentioned during the signing <coughs> of the vans and the bonds, we want to maintain and continue to build critical reserves. So, you know, the general stabilization fund, the debt capital stabilization fund, um, you know, the PFA stabilization fund, and any new um, reserve funds that, that we may uh, create and uh, fund. And we continue to uh, dedicate budget funding to OPEP annually. And with uh, our actuarial study that we have for uh, FY24, we will uh, incrementally be increasing that figure up as well. Um, and that is funded by raise and appropriate. Just quickly, as you saw, um, fixed costs, municipal and school, this is the whole pie. Um, I hope those percentages are right. It's my eyes at this late hour it might not be, but um, actually, nope, just don't pay attention to that slide, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we won't look at that slide. Um, <laughs> we can look at this slide. Um, so 66, 89, as I mentioned, um, is the division of revenue that we saw in the revenue plan. And 33.11 is um, the division of revenue for the municipal side, as we saw on the revenue plan. Key expenditure drivers within the FY23 um, uh, operating budget, and you know their their key expenditure drivers that seem to be repeated um, over several of the past years. Um, Health insurance, of course, is a big one. Um, regional school assessment. We, you know, will continue to be seeing this um, grow, and um, for the reason that 
uh, Northeast uh, Technical um, School is having a new building project. So this does include approximately a little under $50,000 for their debt service and that number will continue for 24 but in years out uh, that number dramatically increases so you will see this as a key expenditure driver going forward um, county retirement assessment this is going to be one until the the pension is um, fully funded in 2034 i believe um, and General liability insurance, um, you know, one that increases uh, incrementally. Um, it's about 5.3% uh, uh, increase over last year. However, we have some rebates that we can take that bring it down to the 3% that we budgeted. And Medicare, of course, um, as, you know, personnel costs increase, Medicare costs will increase. Current cash reserves, um, as many of you saw, the free cash that was certified was 5.2 million. The stabilization fund, which is a critical reserve fund, a uh, reserve that we have on the books, is uh, close to 3.8 billion. And then we have the capital improvement uh, stabilization fund. Uh, that will have a, a deposit and a withdrawal at June town meeting. And it's 958,000. Water Infrastructure Stabilization Fund, uh, 2,751,000. Solid Waste Stabilization Fund, 166,000. Water Retained Earnings came in at 287,000. And Cell Tower Revenue has a current balance of 673,000. And these are all figures before um, we even get to the town meeting you know, um, appropriations from them. So the recommended budgets, um, as you just voted with your, the budget motion. Um, and I see the town administrator vigorously looking, so I hope they're right. Um, but we did, we know that the municipal and school side is correct and um, then fixed costs and fixed costs include uh, health insurance, workers comp, Medicare, uh, debt service, which we just, you know, as you signed, finalized those debt service figures, the regional school assessments, uh, state and county charges, it encompasses uh, quite a broad range of uh, expenses that we share with the municipal and the school side. So we have a total of 78 million, 57, uh, $1,333.57. <clears throat> Questions? Do we have, we do have to open it up to members of the public. If there are any questions, is there anyone in att <laughs> attendance? Anyone in attendance that would like to ask any questions? <laughs> Hearing none, seeing none online, we'll close the we'll close the public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Rohr. All right, we can move on to the next order of business, which is public comment. Is there anyone that wishes to speak in public comment? <laughs> Hearing none, seeing none, no no hands raised. We'll move on to the next order of business which is to review and discuss the June Town Meeting Warrant Articles and... Was there any? Mr. Gilbert, there wasn't anyone. There was not, no. Nope. It's all just us, <laughs> Mr. At this stage, yes. Us. Yeah. All right, so we are review and discuss the Town Meeting Warrant Articles. Correct. Madam Chair, through you as the Finance Director pulls up the presentation that we customarily go through, I have put in the packet um, the motions and I, uh, I put in bold the recommended course of action for each article from, from my standpoint um, to hopefully guide the discussion but obviously it's the board's pleasure with regard to these recommendations 
as I think everybody knows, we don't always make recommendations on every article at this stage. Sometimes we, have, we need to withhold a recommendation <coughs> as we work through the process and um, offer recommendations closer to the town meeting. But whatever we do vote this evening will be put in the warrant, the version of the warrant that will be mailed to um, each household here in North Reading. Okay. So mm -hmm. Article 1, I imagine we're going to wait until we're going to pass over this one, or I mean wait Make a recommendation at the uh, Here it says recommend. Yeah, we're going to recommend it. We're going to recommend budget amendments? So. Madam Chair, through you, we have one. There's one budget amendment that we are uh, <laughs> anticipating. Um, That's unusual, isn't it? It is. We normally do it right up at the town meeting. That's but what it, I thought. At, <laughs> the, at this stage, we know there will be at least one um, for the pay-as-you-throw bags. The recommended funding source is the stabilization fund for solid waste. Uh, we were going to be proposing a transfer into the sanitation budget for FY22 from the solid waste stabilization fund. In the amount of? Um, 40, excuse me, $50,000. And um, are there any other potential? No transfers that we know of at this time, Madam Chair. All no right. other transfers. But you are recommending that we just Vote recommend? to recommend, yes. All right. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 1, fiscal year 2022 20, budget amendment. That's different. Recommend at town meeting Fifth. or recommend? Recommend at town meeting. That's what I but thought. But you're going to recommend. No, that's <laughs> what it says in both. Yeah, yeah. My recommendation is to recommend. It may say recommend at town meeting, oh, but my okay. recommendation is to recommend. I thought I was reading which one I'm going to read. No, no you, you may be, but the recommendation oh, okay. is to recommend. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> let, me, let me start again. <laughs> Madam Chair, I vote to recommend. Right. Article 1, fiscal okay. year 2022, budget amendment. Okay. okay. Second that. I told you we're mud after 10, so. Yeah. Okay, motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I, I am advised that our audio has quit, and I can see that the lights are off, so if you would just wouldn't mind while I stand up and dial us back in. This one's on. Oh, no. Oh, we're in. We're all set now, Madam Chair. Okay. Article 2 is the snow and ice deficit. Fund the snow and ice deficit. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, it's estimated to be $480,000 to be funded with free cash in accordance with the revenue plan you saw earlier, <coughs> and our recommendation is to recommend. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend uh, Article 2. Fund fiscal year 2022 snow and ice deficit. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, through you, Article 3. Transferring funds to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund. 
The balance is currently $958,995. We are recommending to add $1,450,000 in free cash uh, to the fund in accordance with the financing plan for FY 2023. And our recommendation is to recommend. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 3, Fiscal Year 2022, Appropriate Funds to Capital Improvement Stabilization. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, through you, transferring funds to the Water Stabilization Fund, we are recommending a transfer of $287,325. That is the balance of retained earnings for the year ending June 30th, 2021, as certified by the Department of Revenue. And our recommendation is the, that the board vote to recommend. It does say recommend a town meeting. We've since received the uh, certified number, so we're recommending. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 4, Fiscal Year 2022, Transfer Funds to Water Stabilization Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, through you, Article 5, Transferring Funds to the Stabilization Fund. Uh, based on the healthy free cash number that did come in from the Department of Revenue, we are recommending a transfer of $250,000 in free cash be transferred to the Stabilization Fund. Um, I believe our last transfer was last year, Ms. Rourke, in the amount of $150,000, so we continue to make progress there with putting money away. Um, it does say in your packet that we would recommend a town meeting. However, we've since um, altered that recommendation to be a recommend, to, to recommend that the board vote to recommend. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 5, Fiscal Year 2022, Appropriate Funds and Stabilization Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Madam Chair, just quickly. Mr. O'Leary. And it probably should have been done this during the budget discussion, but uh, bond people there, what they, they're looking for more money in this particular account, correct? Uh, no, they're not necessarily looking for more money in this particular account. They just want you to build uh, reserves. And when we explained the policy surrounding the stabilization funds um, that was set up, you know, uh, years ago, uh, they were, you know, satisfied with what we are doing. But of course, we can always do better and, and modify things. So, you know, um, if at the end of this process that we have uh, remaining free cash, it's you know not a bad place to increase the dollar amount. Keep in mind, we can always do it at, uh, at October two after the certification of seven one uh, twenty two. Okay, thank you. <coughs> do we have in that policy a specific percentage of goal that we want to that we want to meet? You know, for ten percent of our annual budget, or yeah, we do. But um, I think it's five percent of net revenue. Um, if I remember correctly, we haven't talked about it. Um, um, yeah, obviously the finance committee would like to see more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars appropriated to the stabilization fund. There have been many years when we haven't. Twenty years ago, we had less than a million dollars in it. We have looked at what other communities are doing with their stabilization funds. Some of it really has to do with what they do with their free cash. Some communities do not spend free cash and have other stabilization, such as for buildings and stuff. So it's very hard to look at it from that standpoint. Um, I think that it's, it's hard to keep up because the stabilization fund obviously is affected by um, cost increases, etc. And um, the, the kinds of needs that this would pay for are, are pretty uncomprehensible in a way. It might have paid for some of the COVID stuff if the federal government hadn't come around. 
but it's it's a, it's already defined in a very restrictive way, and that it's really for a bad rainy day, not just oh well. So, and the other interesting thing, by the way, is that I have not been able to find when the stabilization fund was started. Can that be in our annual reports? Why don't we ask the town clerk to look at that? I've to Karen. You know, this, that, the other thing. The only thing I have not done is go through um, the files in room five. Um, mostly because the building is restricted because of COVID, and I haven't had a chance to go back there. To see if in some of the old minutes that information exists. Crazy beans. Have we had it for the 49 years you've been around, Mr. O'Leary? Well, maybe not. Uh, but no. the, the thing is, is you know, I, I know it takes, what, four-fifths vote to get money out of this from town meeting, right? Stabilization? Uh, two uh, just two thirds? Four fifths. Two thirds? I thought two thirds. Two thirds, yes. Four fifths are probably your building. Yes. Okay. Two thirds. Well. But anyway, um, it, it's good. We have other reserve funds for specific purposes and other accounts, which is great. Um, but I just think that a general overall rainy day account, we should be putting more than $250,000 in. But again, I should have introduced this back in the budget discussion. But in the meantime, anything's better than nothing. Okay. Do we vote, though? We didn't vote on this yet. We had a motion by Mr. Walner and a second by Mr. O'Leary before the discussion. On the so stabilization? Yeah. Is there any further oh. discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 6. Madam Chair, through you, Article 6, transfer of funds to other post-employment benefit fund, benefit liability trust fund. The balance stands at $2,897,000, as you see. We are not recommending a transfer under fiscal year 2022 at this time. However, there is a the customary raise and appropriate um, action in a, in a later article out of FY 2023. I should note, and the finance director can correct me, again, we, we spoke to the very recently certified free cash number from the Department of Revenue. Um, normally, we have that number in hand in October, maybe September, um, because of some complications in the process with regard to CARES Act and other funding sources. It's taken quite a long time to get the number certified, but it has been certified at over $5 million. I think, um, Liz, you had indicated once we go through all these articles, we're going to have roughly about $400,000 in a balance that will not be obligated. So, you know, we're going through this kind of thinking to ourselves, okay, as we get closer to town meeting, we may need to make an adjustment. And the finance director, I don't know if you want to speak to what your recommendation was, but suggested that where we are headed into a significant capital discussion in the fall, perhaps taking whatever balance is left after all of these actions are taken and put it into the capital improvement stabilization fund. Um, so I, I know as we're going through, we're kind of thinking, okay, how are we spending this funding? After you go through all these votes, there will still be about $400,000 unspoken for. Um, as we get closer to town meeting, we'll probably make that recommendation that it go into the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund for future capital needs. Um, so I just, I, I wanted to offer that. I should have offered it under Article 3 when we were talking about capital. Um, but we're not recommending a tra any transfer at this time, and we are recommending that the board take its final action at town meeting. So it will be recommended town meeting. Oh, all right, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 6, Fiscal Year 2022, transfer funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? What's our actuary say we owe? What's it up to these days? We're waiting for, for uh, the latest and greatest plan. So 50 to 60? It was, uh, I want to say, 68. Oh. Sixty-eight million so, liability. <laughs> yeah, you need to start saving. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I thought we had a regular plan on this, where we did this every October town meeting. 
What happened with that? When's the last time that we, I can't remember. So we, we'd make a contribution every June. And so it comes right off the top oh. of the budget process to the tune of 300,000 at this point. And that's just a later article based on the structure of the warrant. I mean, something is better than nothing because we know we're going to have this responsibility, so. Well, the, the philosophy of contributing, you know, $250,000, $350,000 a year was, you know, let's stop the bleeding. You know, if we can, I mean, we were going to be setting how much we did based upon our new hires and what our liability moving forward from a specific date was. But we, we've gotten away from that too. But yeah. so again, it, uh, to, to me, it's at some point, if you, if you put the tourniquet on there, you start funding moving forward, and you're covering that. The rest of it, we're going to be paying as we go anyway through the retirements, uh, through the whole system anyway. So um, I still think we should get back on track and really look at the numbers as to what our new hires are costing us and what our liability is going to be and paying that out on an annual basis along with the back pay, which will take several years to pay off. Okay, so we are... We have a motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary, recommend a town meeting article six. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article seven, transfer to solid waste stabilization fund. Madam Chair, through you, this is an action that we um, deferred taking at the June 2021 town meeting, intended to make the transfer at the October town meeting. However, free cash was not certified at that point in time. So now we're coming back to this action at this point with free cash certified. And the transfer amount is recommended to be $30,000. Yes, the board recommend. So this is recommended? Well, you, the board can now recommend, yes. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 7, Fiscal Year 2022, transfer funds to solid waste stabilization fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walno, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? And just, just as far as JRM just got sold, I heard? Th they did, yes. And what's our contract up with them? Uh, we, I think, have four years, including this upcoming year, left with them based on that's, the extension we signed. That's helpful. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> okay. we're, we're awaiting formal notification of the sale. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's recommended. Article 9, select town officers. Oh. Eight. Article 8. A. Sorry. Article <coughs> 8, I'm so sorry. Participate, appropriate funds to participating funding arrangement. Madam Chair, this is the action we take after the conclusion of the plan year for health insurance. Generally taking that, that action in October, however, free cash wasn't certified at that point, now is certified. Again, this dollar amount comes straight out of what our expenditures and what our surplus was under the PFA, uh, it representing 70% of the total surplus between the town and the employees. And our recommendation is to vote to recommend. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 8, Fiscal Year 2022, Appropriate Funds to Participate in Fund Arrangement Fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 9. Article 9 is a customary action. I, for some reason, it's not bold, but we do recommend the board vote to recommend. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 9, select town officers. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 10, here and act on reports. Seems to be standard one as Routine well. Routine article, we recommend you vote to Routine recommend. Routine article. Motion? You recommend, sorry, I didn't hear that. Yes, recommend. Um, sorry, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 10, here and act on reports of town officers and committees. Second. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 11, prior year bills. We wait on that one, right? Yes, our recommendation is that you um, recommend at town meeting, vote to recommend at town meeting the article. We are aware of one bill at this point. It is a, um, 
an advertising bill from the Conservation Commission, um, but there may be others, so we ask that you vote to recommend a town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting, Article 11, prior year bills. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Operating budget. Madam Chair, through you, uh, Articles 12, through 14 represent the annual operating financing plan, so our recommendation for each of those is to vote to recommend. I move to recommend at town meeting Article 12. No, sorry. Recommend. Sorry, Madam Chair. I move to recommend Article 12, fiscal year 2023 operating budget. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. Same for Article 13, Mr. Warren. Oh, uh, same thing? Yes. Um, I've moved to recommend Article 13, Fund Retirement Obligations. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Same with the next article. Right, you're, you're making a recommendation on that one. Vote to recommend, time. yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 14, appropriate funds to other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. Second. Motion by Mr. Waller, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 15 is also recommended. It is, that's correct. It's not highlighted, but it's a recommend and it's a customary article. Just read it. Yep. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 15, authorize Treasurer to enter into compensating balance, balance agreements. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 16, rescind authorization of borrow. Do we have anything to address? With None identified at this time, but uh, we are going to ask the board vote to recommend a town meeting if anything All comes right. up. We'll Identify it. Madam Chair, I move to recommend at town meeting Article 16, recent authorization to borrow. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, through you, uh, Article 17, the capital plan, 18 uh, building repairs for town buildings, and 19, Chapter 90 highway construction um, are all related to our. Uh, annual capital um, and extraordinary maintenance costs, and we are recommending that they each be voted to recommend. Okay. Vote to recommend. Yeah, I'm going to go through these. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 18, Fund Town Building Repairs. 17. Uh, 17 first. Oh, sorry. Missed that. I'm sorry. I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm going to recommend uh, Article 17, fiscal year 2023, capital expenditures. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 18, Fund Town <coughs> Repairs. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then, Madam Chair, I move to recommend at, oh, sorry, Madam Chair, I move to um, <coughs> recommend Article 19, authorized Chapter 90 highway construction. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, Article 20 authorizes the Director of Public Works to accept certain easements. It's a routine article, and we recommend the board vote to recommend. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 20, authorize the Director of Public Works to accept easements. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Madam Chair, through you, Articles 21 and 22, uh, we are recommending that the board vote to recommend at town meeting. Uh, we are not anticipating any requests for funding for either of these uh, litigation matters as uh, healthy balances remain for, for each. Um, however, we uh, continue our conversations with council on both matters. And so we recommend uh, votes to recommend at town meeting. Madam Chair, I move to um, 
sorry, recommended town meeting article 21, appropriate funds for legal expenses, middle high school litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend a town meeting article 22, appropriate funds for legal expenses, 20 Elm Street litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, through you, Article 23, uh, increasing the amount for disabled veteran property tax exemption. The amount is $400 right now. This would allow us to increase to the statutory maximum of $800 um, per veteran, and uh, we are recommending that the board vote to recommend. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 23, increased amount for disabled veterans property tax exemption. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Madam Chair, through you, Article 24, increasing the income limit for the senior property tax deferral program. Uh, we are recommending that rather than the current $20,000 income limit this be set to match the um, amount set under the state circuit breaker um, program um, the, both the single head of household and married filing jointly amounts prescribed under state statute again this is for deferral uh, for seniors so it uh, allows the town to recover the cost at a, at a later point in time I know the assessor is here, but I do not believe we expect a significant amount of participation in this program. We've not seen much in this program at this point, but that's probably because of the income limit, and uh, we are recommending that we go forward with this matching the circuit breaker. I would note, you know, I know there's some question about, you know, what impact it might have, and we certainly will monitor it uh, over the coming year, and if we see something that is, you know, overly concerning, uh, we have the opportunity to address that at a future town meeting as well. Now, our recommendation is to vote to recommend. Um, uh, Madam Chair, I vote to recommend Article 24, increase the in income limit for senior property tax deferral. Second. Motion by Mr. Walmer, second by Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Madam Chair, through you, Article 25, changing the general bylaws relative to alarm systems at the recommendation of the fire chief. Um, we recommend that the board vote to recommend. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 25, Amend Code, General Bylaws, Chapter 11, Alarm Systems. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> Article 26. Madam Chair, through you, the uh, so-called sewer betterment bylaw that was discussed earlier this evening with the Public Works Director. Um, I recognize that the language has, uh, you know, come before the board uh, in its recommended form uh, only uh, over this weekend. Um, the board, we do suggest that the board consider recommending, particularly where it has become the sponsor of the board, but it's certainly within your purview to um, defer that action until as close to the town meeting as, as you prefer. To for, for purposes of what, getting the correct language in there? No, if, if the board's not ready to make that determination is all. Oh. No, I think we already ready. determined we own it. We're ready. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a motion? Okay, so we're going to recommend? Yep. I would, you, know, you can vote however you want, but yeah. <laughs> Just we haven't seen the final language yet, so. No, but we, we, we have, we, we, we have on the final. We were going to endorse it. Yeah, we, we were going to sponsor we'll, it. We'll have to try to, I guess, amend it or maybe we take a vote on the town meeting. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever the, whatever the majority's prerogative is. Town meeting, then? Give us time to I, I don't think we, I think we, we, the vote would be to move move forward with the we'll at least sponsor it. Okay. And then I think there'd be probably language. It's too bad they didn't, it, we didn't have this before now. Mm -hmm. It's really backwards to do it this way instead of having it finalized for the evening that we have to vote for <coughs> an article. But that's my personal opinion. All right. Madam so, Chair, I move to recommend Article 26, Amend Code, General Bylaws, Assessment, Sewer Veterans. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Got it. 27 is the Swan Pond Forestry Consultant Appropriate Funds. That's correct. And um, Madam Chair, through you to Mr. Walner. We have that as an $85,000 expenditure. Do I? 65. 65. So it was reduced when we took out the design portion of the scope. We took is that out right? the, yeah, the, the Okay. Part, so yeah. that will generate another $20,000 in available funds. So we are re recommending that the board vote to recommend that article. It's proposed to be funded in the amount of $65,000 by free cash um, and to be expended by the Forestry Committee. Can't hear you. So the dollar amount is $65,000. The funding source is proposed to be free cash, and uh, it is uh, proposed to be expended by the Forestry Committee. And I am recommending to the Select Board that they vote to recommend. But it's <coughs> their decision, obviously. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 27, Appropriate Funds for Forestry Consultant, Swan Pond Forest Area. Second. Motion by Mr. Walmer, second by Mr. O'Leary. And we have hands raised, so we'll look to our finance committee. Mr. Kelleher. I, I'm just curious as to where this is going, and you know, $65,000 or 85, whichever it is, out of, out of free cash. We've got, we've got a lot of free cash. It's not going to be a big impact. But the, big, the impact is when the consultant comes back and recommends something, and we're looking at a price tag of, I have no idea what it is, but how do we fund it? Um, well, what we've learned so far is that, I mean, this is trails. We're not going to be paving or, I mean, there'll be some uh, creation of um, parking areas, things of that nature, but it's really pretty minimal infrastructure going inside there. So most of it's going to be more volunteer efforts. Uh, people who are going to come volunteer to help improve the trails maintain the trails, work on the trails. And also we have a connection with Essex Aggie, um, potentially them coming in and helping us to do this. So we're planning to do as much as we can to fund it through just goodwill and volunteerism from the town. That's that's how we plan to do most of the infrastructure work. Not all of it, but most of it. Um, but the goal is to get mapping of that area because there's three different uh, uh, departments, I guess, school committee, Conservation Committee and uh, to town own it. So we want to get mapping, we want to get the trail set up, and we want to come up with some sort of a plan about how to um, uh, make that more accessible for the town since many people don't even know where Swan Pond is, haven't been there, and part of the open space recreational plan is to, that was a high priority item, was to do that type of work. So. And does the 65000 cover that, is that what you're saying? It'll cover almost everything we need, yes. And and there's potential of grants as well that we just don't know about that yet, so. I'm just concerned that we're gonna then have a, a multi-hundred thousand dollar proposal to, to, yeah, to do something there. Projects I've seen. Yeah, we just looked at Can we not, well, let's oh. just one at a time and not talking sorry. over each other. Sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Don. I'm just saying that, 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 that we would have a, a multi-hundred thousand dollar proposal to do something and as we looked at in capital tonight, there's a whole flock of things that we would like to do that we haven't done that are need, that we need to do. And it's it's again the the, the wants and the needs. And I think the uh, if this is that minimal, I don't I don't have a problem with it. If it gets gets expensive, like the rail trail is, that, that that's a problem with with funding it. If you can't fund it. What, why do the, the upfront work? What you're saying is that it's a minimal obligation going forward, and I don't have a problem with that. And I, I believe that to be the case. Uh, and other projects I've seen in the state that do something similar to what we do, it has been minimal funding. So, but if nothing else, we'll have a map, and we'll know our we'll know our territories, and we'll know in the future if we decide to do something, we'll have that because that won't change over time. My understanding of the presentation, though, is that we just want to take the first, the first steps to, you know, you know, making these, the, what it's called as conceptual plans by this, yes. and that there would be an ability to solicit for grant funding to do some improvements that make it accessible. Not I didn't hear anything about volunteers, other than the gentleman who's 
the chair of the committee who's been volunteering in that area for, I guess, decades. But I didn't understand it to be a volunteer effort. And I did understand it to be trying to, it seems expensive to do this, but trying to, to make it designed to be more accessible to the, to the public. And that, you know, there would, this would also entail getting together with residents in notifying residents and getting their input on it too, through mailings and meetings and things like that. So, but I don't know if there's any, Mrs. Carroll, but you had your hand raised too. Did you have any question on it? Um, I was curious as to how many acres encompass the, uh, this town forest. I, I don't know the acres. So. I just don't know. That this was, one? Yeah. They Thank did you. mention that, but I Enough for a it. reservoir. It was like 20, but I forget what it yeah, is. Like <laughs> we do have these amazing <laughs> gems in our community. We have Martin's Pond and Swan I, I Pond. I believe and it's fairly small. I and thought it was large, though. Mm -hmm. I forget what he said, but and it's I acres worth. I know that the, well, I know that the acres are much. Acres. Many um, acres. Like 20 and the, the forest committee used to be, say, 25 or 30 years ago, very active. There were remnants of it when we moved here in 2000. So this is sort of not new. It was nice that the city maintained a piece of one of the town's property. Okay, so we. We have, I think we had a motion and a second. Is there any, any further discussion? All right. The motion was to recommend. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 27. Madam Chair, through you, I will just note more for the record for those who are watching. We do not have an article on here relative to the rail trail pursuant to the board's vote at the last meeting to remove it from the warrant. Okay. <coughs> All right, thank you. So we have to move on to our next order of business, which is a vote to extend temporary outdoor dining. How did that land on our agenda with all the Madam Chair, through you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to the members of the people. <laughs> Thanks. Thank for you, folks. Yes, and we usually don't have company, so thank you. Yeah. Although we have had it. Oh, all right. Mr. Mills, congratulations to your son. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Kate gave us a whole rundown. Fantastic. Yeah, amazing. Oh. Good night. Good night. Okay. Part of the group that went to New York. Part of the group that went to New York. Mr. Gilberto, for the outdoor dining, what, what do we want to vote on that? Yeah, yes. Extend it to when? Uh, under, the, under the statute, to April 21st of 2023. So it's another year. Okay. Our last extension, which was approved, I think, in the fall of last year, expired on uh, April 1st of this year. We have been approached by a restaurant that wishes to resume having temporary outdoor dining. So in response to that request, we are back here requesting a further <coughs> extension. Do we have a motion? We do. Madam Chair, I move to extend previously approved permits for temporary outdoor dining to April 1st, 2023, subject to requests being made by the permit holders and approved by regulatory departments. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thanks, Liz. Legal bills. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Yes, bro. Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for March 2022 in the amount of $20,577.85 as follows. General, $6,207.35. Labor, $5,002. 20 Elm Street, $9,368.50 for a total of $20,577.85. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Town Administrator's report. Madam Chair, through you, as was referenced earlier, the Department of Public Works has informed me that there is a substantial backlog in the processing of orders for the pay-as-you-throw bags required for the proposed pay-as-you-throw program uh, within solid waste. Therefore, the pay-as-you-throw option will not be able to be implemented until November 1st of this year, along with the other new Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection restrictions in what can be disposed of in the solid waste stream. I attached a copy of a flyer that will be circulating in the coming weeks to just inform folks that the change is coming, uh, but that the date will be a bit later than initially anticipated. We will continue to provide you updates and um, we will uh, propose a modification of the board's previous vote to implement the program on July 1st uh, at an upcoming meeting uh, just to have everything uh, be in order. Um, we do not intend to change any existing enforcement procedures during the interim period and therefore the public should experience no change in service during that time up until November 1st. Secondly, and this is a follow-up to a conversation I know we had at the uh, end of the last select board meeting, as has previously been discussed, the Land Utilization Committee is seeking to apply for a Mass Department of Transportation grant funding for design of a potential recreational trail. Um, I attached a copy of a sample application from a previous submission filled out by Mr. Hertz, which will need to be updated to reflect where the project actually stands today, and I know he is working on that. Uh, Mass DOT is seeking a letter from me designating a town hall contact, a draft of which I also attached to my report here since the application is being submitted by a committee. Um, in order to preserve the potential for the town to receive grant funding and to allow for the Land Utilization Committee to address issues related to the exact route, I intend to issue a letter designating a town hall contact, the person to be determined this week, but I do not intend to sign a grant contract if awarded or to authorize a purchase order to expend the funds until either there's a town meeting vote approving the funding for design or advisory approval of the expenditure of the grant funding. Alternatively, if the board, select board and the land utilization committee um, requests that I execute such grant agreement, I would also consider that. Um, I expect that Mr. Hertz is gonna submit the grant in time for the May 16th deadline and just wanna be upfront with the board. You know, this is uh, one where we don't often have much conversation of the grant applications as before they're going in, but you know, for the, for the ease of the abutters and the residents who I know are trying to work through concerns with the land utilization committee, there is no intent to execute any uh, grant agreement to expend <coughs> grant funds beyond what is already in the town's hands um, for this until uh, these issues are resolved. So I just want to be clear with the public on that. And then finally, um, and notably for all of us here who will be leaving the town hall after this meeting, water main construction on Main Street does continue uh, with night work having begun last night. Um, it's going uh, through, we believe, Friday morning, May 13th at 5 a.m. Uh, work hours will be from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And I attached a copy of an announcement and map from DPW and police. So to the board members, we will not be able to get across Main Street at North Street here. We'll have to go down to Winter Street to, to get out or further because it'll be closed for construction. So sorry for the bad news. We'd have to go to where? Either uh, to Oak. Lowell and Winter or uh, um, Park Street to cross over. Um, Main Street. So you can't take 62? Can't take North Street. You can take 62. No, you can take 62 and get over the... Yes. And over and get on to Main Street? Yes. But you can't, you won't... You can get home. You won't, you, but you won't be able to, I don't think you'll be able to turn. <laughs> you two are going to be deterred. Turn where? To the right? We're going to be going on around North Street. the world to go home. Oh, no. I yeah, don't come back. Yeah. You, you, you two have to get home. <laughs> okay. Uh, that concludes my report. Any it questions for Mr. Kilpern? Okay. Board. Oh, let's do board member and all the new business all together. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, the respectful and sincere uh, outreach and expressions of sympathy uh, shown by my colleagues here, town administrator, staff here at Town Hall, and of course the community at large uh, for uh, acknowledging the recent passing of my, my sister-in-law Janet, my brother Paul's wife. Uh, which was very unexpected and uh, you know, uh, about five weeks worth of, of agony. But anyway, the, we live in a beautiful community here and uh, the outreach and uh, support that's been offered and expressions of sympathy and the respect that was shown, uh, has been shown and will continue to be shown uh, is greatly appreciated and acknowledged by uh, uh, my brother and, and the rest of our family. So I thank you all very much uh, for that. Um, the other thing I'd like to just mention is uh, we had an election. 
Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, and again, uh, turnout, 14%, okay. Uh, so I, I guess uh, the only thing I want to say is that um, for those that turned out and for those that participated, again, uh, I, th I think the electorate made some, some very good choices in relation to uh, what they had for choices for candidates, uh, particularly for school committee. I, I think there's a small group of people that are have been of recent times uh, very disruptive. And uh, I found it interesting that the candidate that I happen to find, in my own personal opinion, the most disruptive, uh, tried to opt out at the last minute. Um, and again, it's just indicative of not being involved in a, on a regular basis, not looking to get involved and work within the process and within the, uh, the system that we have. And again, kind of the same group of people that uh, are costing has cost the town a significant amount of money from freedom of information requests and all the rest. And um, I want to thank the public for being somewhat energized, so I'll, I'll give uh, that candidate at least some credit for energizing the public uh, to the extent that uh, the disruption that, that was caused by his candidacy uh, caused some concern in the community where they felt as though they had to come out and participate. And I, to, for that, I, I'm appreciative of that anyway. But you know the nonsense should stop, and a lot of money is being wasted, and resources, human resources, are being wasted. And uh, if they want to get involved, they're welcome. You know, and there are forums, and there are uh, ways in which they can be involved. Uh, I encourage them to do so, and uh, I thank the the general public who participated in the election for making some wise choices. And, uh, Grateful for you two people being returning and willing to serve on the board too, and I look forward to the upcoming uh, upcoming term of serving them. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Mr. Palmer. I'll just add one thing. When we had to swear back in, we have already sworn back in. Again. I hope when so. You, yeah. When you do the swearing, it's constitutionally United States. I support the Constitution of the United States. I support the state laws, and I support my local town laws. And I'm wondering how disruptors could have ever done that oath based on what I heard. So it was just a reminder to me about what you're signing up for, being a public official, you know, being an elected official. You gotta support what's out there even if you disagree with it. You know, you gotta go with what you gotta work within the system, not outside. So anyways, that's the only thing I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Studo. Um, I have the well, so the business summit is going to be May twenty fourth from five thirty to seven thirty. Um, and we will be doing the horseshoe again because if, uh, we looked at every, you know, the limited availability that we have in town. But it seems that if we did, um, if if we did end up with more people, which we hope we do, um, invitations went out. Uh, and if it, you didn't get an invitation, there's an RSVP. Um, there's a there's a link, I believe that we can get you an invite through either us, one of the EDC members, or Danielle McKnight, the town planner. Um, and we're gonna do that because they, as you know, they have a nice big room and especially if we can open it up, people usually prefer to be outside for various reasons right now. So, but yeah, so we have the location again. We had a great turnout last year. Um, there's gonna be a lot of information. Um, so of our own will be Get speaking, hopefully. One's wearing a tie to the left, looking down on his computer right now. Um, and uh, yeah, it should be uh, it should be fun again. But this time, very informative because, as we discussed earlier, there's some pretty big projects that we're trying to put through the pipeline. So it's just uh, as many hits as possible to have a conversation with the public and the business community. Thank you, Madam Chair. Excuse me, there's the ability to register uh, or RSVP through Thank the you. homepage, www.northreadingma.gov. There's a link right on the homepage. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez, I would just like to thank everybody who came out to vote for me. Um, although I was unopposed, I still appreciate everybody who came out and made the effort. And again, condolences to the very Okay, and I just want to add one thing for um, Memorial Day. They are going to do a parade again this year, so hopefully all the members, we can all get together and march together and with the TA and 
you want to bring a wagon with your kids and, and uh, you know, oh. tow yeah. your kids. Is Alberto like Street going to be paid? Alberto did that it's one year. It's fine. That was fun. <laughs> um, and there's a bicycle contest that they, they yeah. the moderator chooses the best decorated bicycle for the occasion and the. Um, it's a. It's finally. I don't think we marched together for a while, so it's a nice right. thing. Um, and the parade <coughs> manager asked at one of the candidates' nights if one of the members could do the regards for the board. And I did ask Mrs. Gonzalez to to do to just give a few remarks uh, when we gather at the bottom of the town common or. Um, for, for that. It's a nice service and it's something it doesn't take a lot, but it's a nice thing to get together. If we can get together as a board and attend it, that would be wonderful. I don't have specific details, but I'm sure they'll be forthcoming. I'm sure they'll reach out. We'll circulate. The second thing, um, just skipped my mind actually. The liaison assignments. I'm primarily going to keep them the same. I might be shifting a couple of Mrs. Gonzalez is with Mr. Studos, but primarily keeping everything as it's going because everybody's rolling through what they're doing and really uh, invested in their assignment. So if if that's all right, I'm going to keep them almost status quo. But I'll get that I will get that updated and to the to the uh, TA to share with the board members. So that's my only other comment and. Do we have a motion to adjourn? We do. Um, Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. We'll second that. Motion by Mr. Wong, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Mr. Wong, well done.